says in Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 and 20, Amen, I tell you again, if two of you on earth agree to ask for anything, it will be done for them, my Father who is in heaven. In fact, where two or three have gathered in my name, there I am among them. I'm here alone. Do I have any other believers? If so, say amen. 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 Good. So let us then begin in the name of God. Let us pray in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Strong and faithful God, as we come for this contest, we ask you to bless these athletes. Keep them safe from injury and harm. Instill in them respect for each other and cause them to use their gifts to your glory. May all the actions and words of coaches and judges conform to your will and be filled with truth, kindness, and respect. Help all spectators to encourage all participants to support the efforts of all the athletes, and in doing so, show love as we would like to be loved. For your gift of faith, forgiveness, and eternal life, we thank you and offer up this event to the glory of your name and the furthering of your kingdom. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, and thank you very much, Reverend Meyer. Please remain standing for the national anthem, and our national anthem today will be delivered by Miss Adriel Mungo and Rosa Sylvester of the St. Mary's Junior School. Am I the only one that got chills? Let's put our hands together for Miss Adriel Mungo and Razia Sylvester of the St. Mary's Junior School. And of course, you may be seated. Uh, I'd now like to invite Mrs. Antonia Stanis Claus of Gateway Christian Academy, and she'll deliver some opening remarks on behalf of the Grenada Private Primary Schools Association. Let's put our hands together for Mrs. Stanis Claus. Our government officials, ministry officials, representatives from Huggins, the official sponsors of the 2023 Grenada Private Primary School Championship Games. Other sponsors, organizing committee, principals, teachers, media personnel, athletes, spectators, well-wishers, all. A very pleasant good afternoon. Today, I am honored with the task of giving these brief remarks on the behalf of the Grenada Private Primary School Association. 
The GPPSA has been around for over 25 years and continues to facilitate youth development, being one of the recognized platforms for our talented students to shine and for fostering the discovery and exposure of hidden talent as athletes from various private primary schools are allowed to compete in a professional manner. The GPPSA prides itself with not only assisting our young athletes to make advancements in the area of track and field, but also provides opportunities in the areas of football and tennis. We wish to say a special thanks to our long-standing sponsor and supporter, Huggins, for 15 years of commitment to the association. May we please give them a round of applause. To Mr. Kester Elcock, Chairman of the GP GPPSA, for his hard work and dedication towards youth and sports. To all organizers of today's games for making this event possible. Technical team, principals, teachers, coaches, parents, but especially to you, our athletes. Today is your day. Stretch beyond yourself beyond the limitations you may have set in your mind. Your performance today does not define you, but is a stepping stone for your advancement tomorrow. So be your best. Do not forget to enjoy the moment. In conclusion, I thank God for allowing us to be here today as we ask him for his continued mercy and protection on us as we look forward to a wonderful day of competition. I thank you. And I thank you, Mrs. Stannis Claus. We certainly do look forward to a day of keen competition. And someone who knows quite a bit about competition and athletics in Grenada is our president of the Grenada Athletics Association, Mr. Conrad Francis. I'd like to invite Mr. Francis now to give a few remarks as we open today's games. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Conrad Francis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Minister Ron Redhead, sponsors, principals, teachers, athletes all. I bring you greetings from the Grenada Athletics Association. I stand here very proud this afternoon to see the development of these games. For those of you who do not know, these games started from very humble beginnings, started by the Grenada Starters Association. It was an idea which grew and grew, and today, this is the outcome of it. So I want to wish all of you, on behalf of the Athletics Association, a very good sports today, a sports that will be exciting, a sports that will be full of fun and enjoyment. Athletics is about performance. It's about how fast you can run, how high you can jump, and how far you can throw the implement. And it doesn't matter if you win or you lose, but once you would have achieved the performance that you are satisfied with, then you will be a winner. So once again, I say, I wish you all the best. I hope that all the athletes will perform well. And also, I want to compliment the organizers of the games today. Um, I know that the chief organizer, Mr. Elcock, so I want to wish him and his team all the best today. I know what it takes to organize a games like this. It is hard work, and I want to really compliment the organizers for putting on 
the show this afternoon. So I wish you all the best. All the teams, I hope that the best team will win this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Francis. Let's just put our hands together for Mr. Conrad Francis. And we say thank you as well to you, sir, for your years of service to track and field and athletics in Grenada. Ladies, at this moment, I'd like to beg your indulgence a bit. Uh, these games are not possible without support and uh, partnership from uh, members of our business community. And our chief and title sponsor today is George F. Hoggins. So I'd like us to raise a round of applause to George F. Huggins for their continued partnership over these years. Let's hear it for Huggins. And as we continue with this afternoon ceremony, I'd like to invite Ms. Dominique Joseph. She's a student of the Westmoreland Junior School, and Dominique will be delivering the athlete's oath. Let's put our hands together and welcome Dominique Joseph. Dominique will be accompanied by Mr. Ronald Charles, and he will deliver the official's oath directly after. Ms. Dominique. In the name of all competitors, I promise that we shall take part in this Huggins Private Primary Schools Track and Field Championships. Respecting and abiding by the rules which govern athletics, committing to ourselves to a sport without doping and without drugs. In the true spirit of sportsmanship. In the name of all judges and officials, I promise that we shall officiate in this, the Huggins Private Primary School Track and Field Championships with complete impartiality, respecting and abiding by the rules which govern the sport in the true spirit of sportsmanship. Thank you very much, Mr. Charles. And of course to you, Ms. Joseph. And we did mention the importance of our corporate sponsors. And we have some brief remarks that will be delivered by our CEO of George F. Huggins, a woman in her right. Let's put our hands together. Welcome, Mrs. Anya Chow Chung. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Warm good afternoon and greetings, and I recognize the presence of our Honorable Minister Ron Redhead, Minister for State, with responsibility for youth, sports, and culture. Mr. Conrad Francis, President of the Grenada Athletics Association. Reverend Ib Mayer, Principal of Grace Lutheran School. I greet all the meet officials, and please allow me to greet all my colleague, uh, members of the Hugging staff, principals, staff, students of all the competing schools, athletes way over there, I hope you all can hear me, right? Parents, where are you? Right, good afternoon to you all. Team supporters, members of the media, good afternoon everyone. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be here this afternoon um, with Huggins as the title sponsor of the private primary schools meet. We've been doing this for the past 15 years. Many of you who have athletes who have been competing for some time, you would know that we used to sponsor under the Ribena umbrella. And then it was the Fruta Cool Kids umbrellas. And I really have to thank Suntory and SM Jalil, our principals, for their support over the years. So this year, we bring it home 
It's the Huggins Private Primary Schools Meet, and it is a pleasure to be able to support this event and to support your children as they compete towards excellence. So we thank you, I thank the organizers for this opportunity to partner. We have seen the meet grow from strength to strength, and we are very pleased to be a part of it. I just want to take a little time. We know that we have schools that excel every time we have this meet. These games produce excellent athletes, and I think we need to push for that lane eight in the national, priv national primary schools meet. Right? We need to push for that lane eight. But I want to speak to the schools who may not come first or second or third or fourth today. I want to speak to the athletes who may not medal this afternoon. You have a tremendous role in the success of our nation's athletes because you drive the medalists forward by competing hard for your school. You drive the champions forward. So I want to say today, let's good sportsmanship healthy rivalry, and strong competition be our motto this afternoon. Thank you all for your support for this event, and you can rest assured, and I'm speaking here to the organizers, rest assured that Huggins will continue to play its part towards the success of this event. Thank you all, enjoy the games, and have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Xiao Chong, for a moving and rousing set of remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, our chief organizer for today's games, Mr. Kester Elcock, uh, by now would normally be here and would be ensuring that things are on the way and on the way well. Unfortunately, today, Mr. Elcock, is at a funeral of a loved one. And so I'd like to ask if we, in support and appreciation for what he has done over the years and what he continues to do, if we can offer some support to him by offering a short moment of silence. So can we all stand? I'd like to invite you all to stand. and will offer a moment of silence for his loved one and a show of support for a man who has been supporting us. May the soul of the dearly departed rest in peace. Thank you, and you may have your seats. At this juncture, we need to declare this afternoon's championships open. And this responsibility has been given to none other than our Minister of State with Responsibility for Youth, Sports, and Culture, Honorable Ron Redhead. Let's put our hands together for Honorable Redhead as he shares some remarks and declares our championships open. Thank you. Principals of the 10 participating schools, Huggins representatives, organizers of this year's games, parents, students, and athletes. I am pleased to declare the Huggins Private Primary School Championships officially opened. And to say how delighted we are as government to witness the many calendar of events this year that are benefiting our young athletes. The government is pursuing an ambitious goal to build Grenada as a premium sports tourism destination in the Caribbean. To this end, enforcing our national policy on sports and physical activity requires our collaboration to achieve. And this event aids in it becoming a reality. 
The combination of private and public sectors is needed to maximize our national expansion efforts of our sports program. And we are satisfied that sporting events like these will do just that. The teams are ready. And may the best team win today in this private school, private primary school championships. And I declare the Huggins Private Primary School Championships of 2023 officially opened and made the best team win. Thank you very much. One love. And thank you very much, Honorable Redhead. Ladies and gentlemen, the games have been declared open and we'll be heading directly to the track for our first event. Thank you very much for your attention and participation. And I'll turn you over to our broadcast colleagues for today, Mr. Roland Antoine and Mr. Alistair Charles. Thank you, Russell. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. That was the conclusion of our opening ceremony. We're getting set for the action on the track. Event number 27. We've had some 26 events prior to today. We start on the track. Event number 27, the 800 meter run. Open. Females. We're getting set for the track. 800 meters. Open. Girls. Event number 27. We want to say a special good afternoon to all those of you who took the time to be here. Parents. Teachers. Siblings, well-wishers, all of the families and the posses, we're happy to have you at the Carnegie James Athletic Stadium. And we're getting set for a keen afternoon of gamesmanship, camaraderie, and competition in this year's private primary school games. Title sponsors, Huggings, and all of the other sponsors have come on board. We want to say thank you to you for your indulgence and your involvement in all of this. For those of you who may not be aware and you're getting settled in, we have 10 teams. 10 participating schools in competition today. Those of you who are normally here and repping your school, you know how this goes. But for the new ones, we're going to run through the team colors and the identifications. Running in blue and yellow, we have the A Plus Institute Junior Academy. Running this afternoon in white and green, we have the Alpha Junior School. <laughs> Running in red and white this afternoon, we have the Beacon Junior School. Representing in, representing in orange, we have the First Choice Junior School. Representing this afternoon in gray and white, we have the Gateway Christian Academy. Representing purple with white, we have the Grace Lutheran School. Representing blue and white, the Grenada Junior Academy. Representing in turquoise, we have the Star Academy. Representing blue and white, St. Mary's Junior School. And representing blue with white stripes, the Westmoreland Junior School. Those are the colors for the 10 participating schools this afternoon. Ensure that your eyes are on the track and you are repping, repping your school, repping your colors to the best of your ability. We're on the track. First event of the day, event number 27, 800 meters, open. Girls. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, in Grenada and throughout the diaspora who are tuning to this live broadcast of the George F. Huggins Private Primary School Track and Field Championships 2023. We're right here live at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. We're about to see the start of the first event for today, which is actually event number 28. 27 events already completed before Sports Day. And to bring you the live commentary, I have with me Mr. Alistair Charles and Ms. Giselle Sylvester. Good afternoon, Mr. Charles, and welcome to the private primary school game sponsored by George F. Huggins. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Smith, and I'm really happy to be here today. And I'm very excited to see some keen competition right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Well, the atmosphere is right, pristine conditions for track and field. The sun is out in its glory. 
the athletes are lined up for the first event of the day, which is the 800 meters open run for girls. And uh, there they are lined up. We have nine participating schools today in this year's track and field meet. The nine participating schools are the Alpha Junior School, the Beacon Junior, First Choice Junior School, Gateway Christian Academy, Grace Lutheran School, the Grenada Junior Academy, St. Mary's Junior, Star Academy, and the Westmoreland Junior School. Later on, we're going to give you the colors of the various schools, but I can tell you uh, it's going to be keen rivalry. The defending champions are St. Mary's Junior, and they're going to be hard-pressed here to defend the champions, the championship. Um, to let you know what the points standing are as the various schools come into competition before ev the first event today, uh, Mr. Charles, you want to give us the updated point standing before we go into event number 28? Okay. We have the Grenada Junior Academy, GJA, with 209.5 points. We have the St. Mary Junior School, 209 points. First Choice Junior, 191. Alpha Junior, 144.5. Westmoreland Junior, 132.5. Grace Lutheran School, 65 points. Beacon Junior School, 54.5 points. Star Academy, 42 points. And Gateway Christian Academy, 15 points. So there we have it, the point standing going into the first event today. Grenada Junior Academy up front on 209.5 points. Only half point ahead of St. Mary's Junior School, the defending champions. The competitors for event number 28, the 800 meter run open for girls. We have uh, Daryl Joseph of the we have Daryl Joseph of the Berean uh, Junior School, Oliver Noel of Grace Lutheran, Enzo De Vega also of Grace Lutheran, Jared Alexander Alpha Junior. Udraj Chukwan from Westmoreland Junior, as we see the athletes been called to order here now. We're also going to have Shamari Wildman, Malashi Campbell, Joshua Bruno, Tiris Braveboy, Josiah Francis, Justin Georges, Jordan Phillip, and they're off. The start of the first event, the 800 meters open run for girls. We also have uh, Saiki Mori, Giovanni Green, Romario Phillip, Dia Sean Ledlow, Brody Pay, and Christian Thompson. And up front already, it looks as it's an athlete out of the, the Beacon Junior, I would think, uh, in the red and white. Uh, Beacon Junior is in red and white today. And uh, they seem to be the, 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 ask the school up front. It looks as though it's St. Mary's Junior in second and third in the blue and white. As St. Mary's Junior move into the lead now. This is going to be a two-lap event. And so they've just completed about 200 meters. Just over 200 meters. Uh, it could be Westmoreland secondary up front. Because they're also in blue and white with a stripe. So that could be... What, yes, indeed, it's Westmoreland 1 and 2. And St. Mary's now moves into third position. And then we have Great Lutheran in purple in fourth. So... The Westmoreland Secondary in 1 and 2 with about 400 meters to go in event number 28, the first event on the track today, the 800 meters open run for girls. St. Mary's moves into second position now, 400 meters to go. With about 40 meters lead ahead is the athlete from the Westmoreland Secondary School. Grace Lutheran in fourth and fifth at the moment. This, the field is nicely spread out here. 300 meters to go. It is still Westmoreland secondary. St. Mary's Junior in second. Westmoreland in third. A good run by Grace Lutheran now in fourth, looking to move into the third position. But with a commanding lead, it's still the athlete from the Westmoreland Junior School. Grace Lutheran now moves into third and looking good as well. Maintaining good form and good leg turnover, good leg speed as well. Is the athlete from Grace Lutheran. I believe she would also catch up with that athlete in second position from St. Mary's Junior. 200 meters to go in this one. Event number 28. The 800 meter run for, for girls open. The momentum is definitely picking up here. With just over 100 meters to go. It is still Westmoreland secondary. Looking very comfortable indeed. She turns up the pace now as she sprints down the home straight. 
And uh, she's going to win this one commandingly. As uh, she still has a lot left in the tank. Where small and secondary is going to be. She sprints to the finish line now, crosses the line just about now. Is Westmoreland secondary, the unofficial winner for event number 28, the first event on the track, the 800 meters open. Coming in second, Grace Lutheran, and a good run back here by her, and it looks as though it said Mary's Jr. in third. As we look at the rest of the field coming in, not a bad run to kick things off today. A spirited run indeed, event number 27, that is, the 800 meter open for female. Quite a number of fans already here. We had a very prompt start today. So Charles, um, a good run indeed by these youngsters. I mean, it's a, a race of endurance for them at their age. And we see them coming in pretty strong here and even maintaining uh, their composure on their feet at the end. Uh, we, we normally see at the end of these long races, the athletes are spread out on the, on the track. But these youngsters still have some left in the tank, so to speak. Oh, as they say, children have a lot of energy. And indeed, it was a wonderful race, and I am happy to see uh, all the girls participating. I, I believe that this is one of the more daunting races um, when it comes to track and field, uh, where you have to have a nice balance between stamina and speed, uh, combined with, of course, strategy, uh, in order to get to the finishing line first. Of course, indeed, it's a, it's a race that combines all of those qualities there, speed, stamina, and indeed strategy. So that was... The first event on the track, as a matter of fact, we want to apologize. The athletes uh, we called earlier for you were the boys. And um, it was actually the girls who ran off the 800 meter uh, run open. And uh, Westmoreland Secondary winning this one unofficially. The Grace Lutheran School was in second. And in third was the St. Mary's Junior. So it was uh, indeed Eliza Rosa of the Westmoreland Junior who came in first with 2 minutes 44.21 seconds. Lemaire Francis of the Grace Lutheran School was second. And Chelsea Springer of St. Mary's Junior was third. The official results for event number 27. We remind you that the games have been sponsored by George F. Huggins. They are the title sponsors. And uh, formerly, their product, Ribena, would have been a major feature of these games. And there are also some major contributors that we want to recognize as well, besides our title sponsors, uh, George F. Huggins. And so we'd also like to recognize uh, some of the associate sponsors, Glenex Springwater, the National Lotteries Authority, Flo, the Grenada Cooperative Bank, Digicel, and Republic Bank. As Charles, we see the boys are lining up for their version of the 800 meter event and you want to call for us the starting lineup from the various schools not a problem and you can hear the crowd just going ecstatic right now as they are about to witness event number 28 the boys 800 meter open in the lineup we have daryl joseph from beacon beacon junior school oliver noel from grace lutheran enzo de vega grace lutheran jared alexander alpha junior Udraj Chuktan, I believe it is, um, Westmoreland Junior. Uh, then we have Shamari Wildman, of Alpha Junior, Malachi Campbell, first choice, Joshua Bruno of Gateway Christian Academy, uh, Therese Braveboy, Alpha Junior Sec, Josiah Francis, St. Mary Junior School, Justin jo Georges, uh, Beacon Junior School, we have Jordan Phillip, Westmoreland Junior School, Sky Murray, Gateway Christian Academy, Giovanni Green, St. Mary Junior, uh, Romario Phillip, First Choice, Deshaun Ledlow, Star Academy, Brody Pear, and Kristen Thompson of Grenada Junior Academy. So well, the boys are ready for their version. The record for this event is currently held by Cajun Smith Walters of St. Mary's Junior School, a record he established in 2014 of 2 minutes 28.4 seconds. Well, I wonder if we could get that record broken today, or at least equaled. Time will tell. They're on the starter's orders, and you can see them interacting with each other. It's still a good camaraderie, you know, uh, just like brothers, uh, although they're competing 
as forwards when it comes to uh, the performance. So that's all in good team spirit, and that's what we would like to promote at all times uh, in these kinds of events. And there we have it. The crowd is just simply going wild, and they're already excited. And you know, this 0.5 point lead uh, between Gateway, uh, sorry, Grenada Junior Academy and the St. Mary's is going to be something that will have people on the edge of their seats. And well, the up and running is the boys' version of the 800 meters open. And we're going to see a much quicker race here. It's a nightly. Nicely packed bunch here as they begin to spread out over the track. Two laps in this event. Two athletes already up front and uh, separated themselves from the rest of the pack. We try to get to you uh, the schools up front. It looks as though it's uh, Star Academy in the turquoise up front. And the school in second place could be St. Mary's Junior. It's a little bit difficult for us to tell from our vantage point here. But Star Academy in the turquoise here, they up front. And closely on the heels of the athlete from the Star Academy. Uh, that looks like uh, Alpha Junior. It's indeed Alpha Junior in second position at the moment. So unlike what we've seen in the girls' uh, edition of this event, two other schools expressing their dominance very early. Star Academy is one of the newer schools participating in these games. Well, the athlete from Star Academy with less than 400 meters to go has maybe a 60 meter lead on the athlete from Alpha Junior and the rest of the field is really trying to play catch up on these two athletes. So they spread all over the track here. Star Academy it is with maybe two, just over 200 meters remaining. In second is Alpha Junior, St. Mary's may have just moved into the third position, but look at how far the gap is. St. Mary's making a good run here. Moving now maybe into second position is the athlete from St. Mary's, but he would have the Alpha athlete to contend with for second and third. But I think first position may be a foregone conclusion with about 120 meters to go is the athlete from uh, the Star Academy, as him here, he still has a lot more to go. He's pumping, he's putting out all that he's got. He's going to win this one comfortably. He's still glancing over the shoulders to see where the competition is going to be coming from. There's absolutely no competition. Star Academy it is. The battle real, the real battle is for second and third as he wins it now. But uh, Alpha Junior maintains good form and crosses the line now for second. St. Mary's in third, the top three positions. In event number 28, the 800 meter run open for boys. Charles, a good run indeed by the athlete from Star Academy. Yes, indeed. Uh, he maintained that lead and he ran a very strong race. Uh, he seemed very confident uh, in his strides and in his whole body language. And I like the competition that was coming in, in in second place as well. And as we see, one of the things I like about these races, uh, Smith, is that the athletes always try to finish the race and um, that's an admirable quality uh, whether you're in front or whether you're the last person you know you always try to finish the race that's good sportsmanship right there absolutely absolutely and then we see the rest of the field coming in here the po just the point you're making and even though the the first place athlete would have come in maybe a couple of minutes ago, they're still running hard towards the finish line. So it looks as if it was Dishon Ledlow of Star Academy that was the eventual winner for this one in a time of 2 minutes 29.99 seconds. Uh, Dishon Ledlow and Therese Brave Boy of Alpha Junior was second and Giovanni Green of St. Mary's Junior in third position. The athletes have already begun to show themselves to be great competitors. And we look forward to event number 29, the girls' 40-meter dash under seven. These tiny tots, as I would like to call them, are uh, displaying their wonderful talents. And I was speaking to one coach recently from a well-known uh, club here in Grenada. And he was indicating that it takes about five years or so 
of, of, of serious training to get an athlete to top form and put, um, performing at uh, their, 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 their peak. And so um, when you see that the athletes starting at the f seven years old and nine years old, um, it's very encouraging to see what we would see in the next five years to come. Absolutely. And we just want to apologize to the viewers. If we would have said uh, Westmoreland Secondary, we're actually referring to Westmoreland Junior. This is a private primary school's games, so there are no secondary schools athletes participating. So we do apologize for that mix-up if indeed we said St. Mary's, uh, sorry, Westmoreland Secondary. We're getting set, as you said, for event number 29, the girls' 40-meter dash. And this event, we will see the likes of Amaya James from St. Mary's Junior, Darby Haaland from Grace Lutheran, Nevia Samuel, St. Mary's Junior, Jewel Radix, Grace Lutheran, Madison Thomas, Grace uh, from Grenada Junior Academy, Esmel Wilson Lewison, Alpha Junior, Moriah James, Beacon Jr. and Kayla Wilson from Grenada Jr. Academy. So they're going to be making their way onto the track in a short while. Uh, the athletes for event number 29, the girls 40 meter dash on the 7th. And uh, to let you know that uh, only two events have been completed so far, just in case you have uh, just joined us. And it's going to be a lot of excitement. These games have proven to be very exciting over the years. And uh, to also let you know that coming into the games today, before the start of the first event on the track, there was only half a point separating Grenada Junior Academy and the defending champion St. Mary's Junior. And on uh, maybe 18 points behind, first choice junior in third position. So the top three schools are very, very close indeed. They came in at 209 and a half points, 209 and 191. That's Grenada Junior Academy, St. Mary's Junior, and the First Choice Junior. So it's going to be a real battle between these three schools, I would think, Charles, all the way down to the last event. Oh, yeah. Um, and we saw something very similar last year uh, where the, the competition was very keen as well. Um, looking at the preliminary uh, times for event number 29, the girls' 40-meter dash under seven, and I see some very interesting times here. Uh, we have Drew Radix coming up with the best time in the prelim preliminaries uh, of 8.82 seconds. Then we have uh, Madison Thomas of Grenada Junior Academy coming in with 9.02 seconds. And Navea Samuel of St. Mary's Junior School coming in with 9.17 seconds. So Charles, what is interesting to note is that Grace Lutheran is featuring nicely amongst the, the schools, a lesser known school as Grace Lutheran. We saw them coming second in the 800 meters moments ago. Right. And now they're coming in with the best time for the 40 meters on the seven. So although the, the more prominent schools, so to speak, the St. Mary's Junior, the Grenada Junior Academy, now Alpha is in the mix and, and so on, um, we're seeing those lesser known schools holding their own and, and, and gaining recognition on the track as well, which is, which is good. And, and we, we also see that happening at the, the national primary school games and even at Intercol, right. we see schools that we basically wrote off as, as non-performers or poor performers coming forward and, and, and winning medals and so. So it's good to see those schools being featured. And it, it, it's a testimony maybe of what the coaches are doing at those schools as well. I, I believe so indeed. And I, I also see um, there's a growing trend right now in Grenada where uh, apart from uh, relying on the school coaches and compl to complement that actually we have the clubs going on so we have those particular clubs like Ace and Fusion and, and the works and so a lot of work is going on there as well um, to assist with you know the performance of the athletes. And I think the athletes in the St. George's area may be benefiting the most from that because I think uh, there are many more track clubs in St. George's than, than the other parishes. I'm not sure if there's any in St. Patrick, for example. I know of East in, in St. Andrew, but East has a very small um, group of, of athletes that they're working with there. Mm -hmm. There used to be Western Zone. I'm not sure how active they are now. Um, St. Mark's, I really don't think they have a track club there. And then um, the, the rest of the clubs are in St. George's, and then we have trail blaz track blazers in St. Davis, which is one of the, the bigger clubs. But I think the the advent of these clubs in the parishes is really helping the athletes and making it easier for the coaches at the schools 
to really harness the talent that has been identified by those those clubs. Uh, in a recent conversation, uh, a well-known athlete, internationally known athlete, was basically saying that Grenada is a gem and of course that we have the great potential based on what we have, the real resources, the natural resources we have uh, to provide training for the athletes. Uh, what I would like to see though is probably in uh, different areas of the island, we have some synthetic tracks where the athletes could really perform um, to the best of their ability uh, with in a similar environment. Yeah, so it, it's a combination of all these things. So we need the coaches, right. we need the, the facilities, and we need the equipment. For example, I am sure that there are great huddlers in St. Patrick or St. Mark or St. Andrew, but to what, what level of access do they have to huddle? So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm aware of, of, for example, there might be a batch of huddles in St. Andrew, but to what extent is being used? Or to what extent are the coaches equipped and, and ready to, to to assist the, the athletes there. And so all of those factors must be brought into place. I think the raw talent is there, yeah, is but it? in terms of the coaching, in terms of the equipment and the facilities, I think um, maybe some more work can be done there. But we're getting set for event number 29, the 40 meters dash on the seven girls. And again, we want to let you know that in this event, you will see Amaya James of St. Mary's Junior in lane one. In lane two is Darby Hallam of the Grace Lutheran. Lane three, Nevea Samuel of St. Mary's Junior. Lane three, one to look out for definitely, Joel Radix of Grace Lutheran. Lane four, Madison Thomas. Sorry, lane five, Madison Thomas of Grace Grenada Junior Academy. Lane six, Esmond, I think it is here. Wilson Luzon of Alpha Junior. Moriah James of the Berean Junior is in seven. And in lane eight is Kayla Wilson of the Grenada Junior Academy. The record for this event, 8.82 seconds. And we already see that Jewel Radix is coming in. Uh, she actually has the record for this event. So I think um, she'll be looking to better her time here. Charles. And they are off. And there they go, ladies and gentlemen. Event number 29, the girls 40 meter dash under seven. And out in front right there was Jewel Radix. And let's see what the time looks like unofficially. The Jewel Radix came in on in first, but let's see what the time says. Well, the, re the, the record is 7.62 seconds, established in 2022 by Shaquan Stephen of Grenada Junior Academy. And let's see if Jewel Radix of the Grace Lutheran School, who came in with a best time of 8.82 seconds, is able to eclipse that record established in 2022. So she ran 8.52 seconds. So she ran even faster than she did in the preliminaries. And uh, Madison Thomas came in second with uh, 9.02. And the Via Samuel of St. Mary's Junior in third. So congratulations to young Jewel Radix of the Grace Lutheran School, the winner of the 40 meters under seven girls, returning an impressive time of 8.52 seconds. But it's good to see the youngsters, you know, on the track and maintaining them comp their composure. I, re I recall many years ago, they were, they were very uneasy and very nervous and, 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 and in some instances very eager to run. But now we see a lot of work has been done with them in preparing them for these kind of events. They look very much composed on the track. Oh yeah, all them waving and, and all of this. Uh, it's really exciting to see how confident they are. So there we see the starting lineup for the under seven boys, 40 meters. Vaughn St. Louis in lane one. Bryson Mendes, St. Mary's Junior in two. Tariq Batiste, St. Mary's Junior in three. Kalik Nimrod, Beacon Junior in four. Stefan Johnson, first choice in five. Gianni Thomas of Westmoreland Junior in six. Kazen Rouse of Grenada Junior Academy in seven. And Ethan Beggs of the Grenada Christian Academy in eight. There they go here, yeah. along the middle of the track. Looks like the athlete from the Berean School. Berean in the red and white here. He sprints to the finish line and crosses now. Uh, that's uh, 
In lane four, Kalik Nimrod from the Burian Junior Academy from the Burian Junior School seems to be the unofficial winner of the 40 meters under seven boys. As we look back here again, Charles, he really set some daylight between himself and the rest of the athletes. Oh, yeah. I'm um, seeing here that in the pre prelims, he had the fastest time, I think, coming in uh, with a time of 8.15 seconds. Let's see. Uh, uh, the official results are here, and it is indeed Khaled Nimrod. And he went, oh, wow, look at that, 8.06 seconds. That's a wonderful race there. And uh, we want to congratulate young Khaled and all the other athletes for their performance. So in second was Gianni Thomas of the Westmoreland Junior School and the Grenada Junior Academy, Kazin Rouse, was in third. But again, a good run here by Kalik Nimrod of the Birian Junior School and uh, really setting himself a apart from the rest of the athlete in, in this event. Okay, just to let you understand the colors once again, uh, if you're listening or viewing uh, online, we have the A Plus Institute Junior Academy and they are in blue and yellow. We have the Alpha Junior, white with green. Beacon Junior, red and white. First Choice Junior School in orange. Gateway Christian Academy, gray and white. Great Grace Lutheran School, purple with white. Grenada Junior Academy, blue and white. Star Academy, turquoise. St. Mary's Junior School, blue and white. And the Westmoreland Junior School, blue with white stripes. Okay, so we have literally two three teams uh with blue and white um and that's gonna make our work here for us pretty interesting charles very much so but i just want to look back to at where some of the schools are located and it's quite interesting so we have the the alpha junior in the tempe from the tempe area beacon junior of course from belmont first choice junior from tempe uh the gateway christian academy points lanes Grace Lutheran from Woodlands, the Greenwood Junior Academy Tempe, St. Mary's Junior Tempe, Star Academy, I'm not sure of their location, and then we have the Westmoreland Junior from Mara Steel. So Charles, quite a number of the schools, the private primary schools from the Tempe area, and um, it's interesting for that kind of a geographic representation of the various private primary schools. Yes, I ply that route every day, and I am, I'm, I'm testimony to the number of vehicles on a daily basis passing in that area um we we might want to rename that street one day <laughs> so folks in tempe i'm not sure who you're shouting for today because several of these private primary schools are in the tempe area but what is also interesting about th these games is the amount of the the extended family that comes out to look at these youngsters so it's not just mommy and daddy, but we have the aunties and the grandmas and grandpas and uncles. And they really come and they really, really are vociferous and shouting and encouraging these youngsters. It happens at a different level to the, the primary school games. The private primary school games, there's a different vibe and a different level of emotions oh, yeah. that come from the spectators. I see that and uh, some support so nicely that they come out all decked off in their t-shirts with their, the, the athlete of their, their, their representation uh, printed on them and you know they, they, they just want to represent and show the love and support to their son, their daughter, their niece, their nephew whomever it might be um, and that's really good. In fact I heard one parent recently saying well I don't have a child running um, here today but I'm still coming to support because um, these parents also support my son when, when, when he runs and he's in a different category in a different school and so it's, it's amazing the love and support that sports brings to um, the nation on a whole. Well we hear about past students so they also past parents. Right. So the parents will still come and support the schools that they, they, the kids or the children would have gone to mm -hmm. over the years and that's good for the support and the love of it and to remind you that George F. Huggins are the title sponsors of the private primary school games and we also want to recognize the ministry of education youth and sports and the grenada athletic association as partners in this process we heard during the opening ceremony earlier on this morning messages from mr conrad francis who represented the grenada athletics association we also heard from mrs anya chow chong the 
general manager or CEO of uh, George F. Huggins. The official oath was taken by Mr. Ronald Charles and the athlete's oath was taken by Miss Dominic Joseph of the Westmoreland Junior School. And we had two lovely young ladies doing the national anthem, Adriel Mongo and Rosia Sylvester of the St. Mary's Junior School. And we must mention too that uh, the opening remarks were delivered by a representative of the Grenada Private Primary Schools Association, Mrs. Antonia Stanis Claus. So there's nothing happening on the track now, but to let you know that the next event on the track would be the 80 meters dash for the under nine girls. That's event number 31. We see some of the athletes making their way onto the track. And as soon as uh, they are ready, we will let you know what's happening. But it seems as though there may be a slight change in the... It seems as though we're going to have the first medal presentation, actually. And so, so we would maybe for a brief moment go over to the uh, stadium announcement microphone for the medal presentation for the events completed so far today. Ladies and gentlemen, event number 27, the girls 800 meter run open. Your bronze medalist, finishing a time of two minutes, 55 seconds, from St. Mary's Junior School, Katia McQueen. Silver medalist, finishing in a time of two minutes, 51 seconds, from Grace Lutheran School, Lamaya Francis. And ladies and gentlemen, your gold medalist, two minutes, 44 seconds, from Westmoreland Junior School, Eliza Rose Benjamin. These are your medalists for the girls' 800 meter run open. Next up, event number 29, the girls' 40-meter dash. In third position, in a time of 9.17 seconds, from St. Mary's Junior School, Nivia Samuel. In second position, your silver medalist, 9.02 seconds, Grenada Junior Academy, Madison Thomas. And your gold medalist, 8.82 seconds, from Grace Lutheran School, Jewel Radix. These are your medalists for the girls, 40 meter dash, under seven division. Next event, event number 30, the boys, 40 meter dash, under seven. In third position, your bronze medalist, a time of 8.46 seconds, from Grenada Junior Academy, Kazane Rouse. Your silver medalist, from a small and junior school, Gianni Thomas. And your gold medalist, a time of 8.15 seconds, from Beacon Junior School, Kalik Nimrod. Ladies and gentlemen, your boys, 40 meter dash. In our next event, the boys 800 meter run open. In third position, a time of two minutes, 35.94 seconds. St. Mary's Junior School, Giovanni Green. Your silver medalist, two minutes, 34.83 seconds from Alpha Junior School, Tyrese Brave Boy. 
And your gold medalist, the time of two minutes, 29.99 seconds from Star Academy, Dyson Ledlow. Ladies and gentlemen, your medalist for the boys, 800 meter run open. We say a special thank you to Miss Daniel, supervisor at Glenel's Bottling Company for her assistance this evening. So we head back to the track for the 100 meter. Sorry, that's the 80 meter dash. We're heading back to the track. So back over to you, Mr. Antoine. Thank you to the medal presentation party. Congratulations to all of our medalists for the outstanding performances on the track. This afternoon, Huggins Private Primary School Games 2023. Back on the track we go, event number 31. Girls, 80 meters, under nine. The record in this event stands at 12.39 seconds. So we welcome you back to the live track action in the girls' 80 meter dash on the nine. They're already on the starters' orders. We have Sydney, Haley, Dana, Jazion, Sanjay, TJ, Latoya, and Dia in this one. They're up and running here. Let's see who comes out first. Looking good in the middle of the track. It looks like Josiah Johnson of Alpha Junior. In the white and green, Alpha Junior it is, and it looks like Westmoreland Junior in second. But Alpha wins it here now with Josiah Johnson, and uh, she was one of the favorites in this race, Charles, and living up to expectations. Well, that was a, a quick race, <laughs> um, and we're ready to see what the official results are saying. I, I do like the performance levels of the various schools are, as you said before, they're coming up um, and they're making a name for themselves. And it's really wonderful to see that. Well, Josiah Johnson, the unofficial winner for the 80 meters dash on the nine girls from the Alpha Junior School. Indeed, 12.85 seconds, she returned. Westmoreland Junior in second and uh, Dia John the of the Birian Junior Position three, Dia John, Beacon in Junior third. School. Position two, Sanjay Simon, oh. Westmoreland Junior. And the winner of this event, 12.85 seconds. Alpha Junior School. Just so Alpha Jesus. Junior School winning uh, that event, the Grenada Junior Academy and the St. Mary's Junior. So although St. Mary's Junior maybe has not won any event so far, Charles, we see them featuring in the top three in most of the events completed so far. And uh, we're saying that in the context that St. Mary's Junior comes into the games today half a point behind the uh, Grenada Junior Academy. So as soon as we get a points update, we'll share with you, but I would think that St. Mary's Junior may be in the lead at the moment based on the number of top three positions they would have um, attained so far. Well, that's uh, one of the things that you have to realize. Um, some people think that it might be the, well, as they say, 1-1 one, one Coco fills the basket. And that's, that's what we could see representing here today. You're about to witness uh, the next race, which is event number 81. It's actually event, event number, number 32, 32. Sorry, the 80 event meters dash on the nine. And you want to quickly call the lane assignments? Of course. We have Shamar Lenick, lane one, Shamar Lenick of Grenada Junior Academy. We have Joshua Granger of 
First Choice Junior School. We have Jehu Roberts of Grenada Junior Academy. We have Caleb Pascal of First Choice Junior School in Lane 4. Lane 5, Joel Theodore of St. Mary's Junior School. We have Kai Phillip of Westmoreland, sorry, Westmoreland Junior School. We have Ziki St. Bernard of of Gateway Christian Academy and Dion Forrester of St. Mary's Junior School. Well, they're on the starters orders now. I can tell you one athlete to look out for here. It definitely is Caleb Pascal of First Choice. He's in lane four. And they're up and running here. Nice clean start. There goes Caleb Pascal in the red and white for the First Choice Junior in the orange and white. He has good challenge on his left here, but uh, Caleb is going to win this one. He dips for the tip now. He wins over Jehu Roberts of the Grenada Junior Academy. But a very competitive run by the athletes in the 80 meters on the nine boys. Oh, yeah, indeed. And um, I, they, they were performing as in tip top. I see. Wow, look at that. Look at the replay. And you can see young Caleb just getting all that energy in, breathing, working on the rhythm of his breath so, you know, he would be able to manage himself properly. And Jay was not giving up either, um, but he lost it just before the finishing line. Wonderful race by the gentleman here today for event number 32, the boys 80 meter dash under nine. I thought it was very competitive. Um, J.U. Roberts did give some good, good challenge to, to Caleb, but Caleb being the stronger of the two athletes here and the bigger of the two as well. But in terms of form and technique, um, um, Jehu did look uh, um, pretty smooth coming along that 80 meters dash. But a good run indeed by the athlete from the Alpha Junior in the orange and white. And it goes back to what I was saying concerning the merging of the uh, foot, uh, the clubs and um, working along with the schools. I, I'm aware that Jehu, for example, he trains with Fusion Athletics. So um, that could account for his form and, and technique as and well. Te yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're looking on in the diaspora, we welcome you at this point in time. Uh, experiencing some beautiful sunshine here in Grenada. Not too hot, a bit overcast. But nevertheless, it's a wonderful day, or a nice cool day for running here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It's all about George F. Huggins, uh, the Huggins Primary Schools Track and Field Championships 2023. The next event on the track would be the 100 meter dash for the under 11 girls. And uh, they're already on the starters orders. We're going to see in this event uh, Desire Mitchell from St. Mary's Junior, Akiva Walker of First Choice, Lee Meyer, uh, Lee Meyer Francis of Grace Lutheran, Dominic Joseph of Westmoreland Junior, Connor Mary Monroe. From St. Mary's Saint Junior, Mary's junior School. Uh, Nikona Ned from Grenada Junior Mary's Academy, Kemisha Alexander from First Choice, and uh, Micaiah Sam Mikhail of the Burian Junior School. Nice preliminary time uh, from Dominic Joseph from Westmoreland Junior School. She's coming in with a preliminary time of 14.83 seconds. Uh, looking forward to seeing her and what the performance is here today. So this one should be a very competitive one based on the times that we see. So although Dominic Joseph of Westmoreland Jr., who is in lane four, comes in with the fastest time, um, she should receive very good competition from the athlete from St. Mary's Junior School, Connor Mary Monroe, who is no stranger to this track. We, we saw her here last year. She was a, a feature athlete for St. Mary's Junior. So she's uh, expected to give good challenge to Dominic Joseph to her right. So they understand those orders now. Let's see how this one turns out. It's going to be a competitive one. Keep your eyes on the screen. Uh, the race here is going to be a close one between uh, the athlete in lane four and five, Dominic Joseph and Konami Mono. They're up and running a nice clean start here. And there goes uh, Dominic Joseph already. And uh, it's actually the quarter net, it seems like, from... Uh, uh, the school here out there in lane five, Conor Murray Monroe it is from St. Mary's Junior. So we mentioned Conor Murray Monroe as a, a, a challenger to the athlete uh, Dominic Joseph from Westmoreland Junior. 
But it looks as though Conor Murray Monroe from St. Mary's Junior may have been the eventual winner here. And that's what happens, that's what can happen. Based, based happens. on our experience, um, being here several times before, and uh, maybe the additional preparation as well, Conor Murray Monroe it seems the unofficial winner. Here it is, the official results now, 14.66. Conor Murray Monroe coming in as the second favorite and winning over Dominic Joseph of Westmoreland Junior, the corner net of Grenada Junior Academy in third. Indeed a competitive race and the boys are already uh, on the starters orders. You're about to win this event number 34, the boys 100 meter dash under 11. In the lineup we have in lane one, Aiden Fraser, Fraser, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane two, Neymar Hood, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane three, Lane three, Bartholomew Moore, first choice. Lane four, Jonathan Labari, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane five, Jaden Bain, St. Mary's Junior. Lane six, Reese Peters, Alpha Junior School. Lane seven, Sean Park, Alpha Junior School. And lane eight, Wayne Neptune, Gateway Christian Academy. The record 13.45 seconds, established in 2017 by Rodney George. Rodney George, formerly of the Burian Junior School. They're on the starters' orders. Let's see who's hungry for this one. The 100 meter dash on the 11 boys. And they're up and running here. Nice good start again in the middle of the track in lane four. Looks like Jonathan Labari here. Jonathan Labari of St. Mary's Junior is looking good and pulling away from the rest of the field. A good run indeed here by Jonathan Labari here. He's going to win this one very comfortable with maybe 10 or so meters ahead of the second place winner who looks like an athlete over there from uh, maybe Alpha Junior. But a good run indeed by Jonathan Labari of the St. Mary's Junior School, Charles. Well, it did seem, uh, from the looks of it, like with every step he was accelerating. Um, he was just keeping on um, increasing that distance. Uh, when you see the replays, uh, you would see what I'm talking about. But it was, it was amazing. That was a, an amazing run, I, I must say. Jonathan Labari, indeed, of St. Mary's Junior School, 14.26. Jaden Bain, also from St. Mary's, at 15.17. And uh, Jalen Moe, from the first choice, in third. So, a good run, indeed, here by Jonathan Labari to win for St. Mary's Junior. So St. Mary's Junior continuing to show some prominence and maybe dominance too on the track today. They'll be hard pressed to defend their championship. They've been winning, I think, for the last seven years, if my memory serves me correct. And they've been hard pushed here by the Grenada Junior Academy as the girls get ready for the under 13, 100 meters. And we will see here in lane one from the Burian Junior Isla Scott, also from Burian in lane 2, Emma Benjamin from Westmoreland Junior, Eliza Rose Benjamin from Grenada Junior Academy in lane 4, Kaya Swan in lane 5, Kylie Williams of Star Academy lane 6, uh, Leah Campbell, Alpha Junior also from Alpha Junior in lane 7 is Rihanna Greenwich and in lane 8 is Kadia McQueen of St. Mary's Junior School so these are the big girls so to speak, um, Charles we still have the under 15 category to go, but they're chasing a record time here held by Zienna Bain, formerly of St. Mary's Junior, of 13.34 seconds, established in 2017. That's a long time to hold the record. Let's see what happens today. So, some nervous, some jittery moments here. Zienna Bain now at the St. Joseph's Convent. She actually competes for St. Joseph's Convent at... Uh, uh, the second, she should be at Tam CC now, Ziana. She used to be at the St. Joseph's Convent and participated for them at Intercall Games. So it's quite some time since she has established that record here in the under 13 girls category. 
So there they are. Scott, Benjamin, Benjamin, Swan, Williams, Campbell, Greenish, and McQueen. Silence deafening the track here and they're up and running here. Who comes out early here? Looks as though they at it in lane four indeed. It is Kea Swan. Kea Swan from the Grenada Junior Academy. She's pulling away from the rest of the field, pumping their arms, go really, really high up. She wins comfortable now. It looks as though it's an athlete from Alpha Junior. That's Rihanna Greenwich, who may have topped the second here. But a good run indeed from Grenada Junior Academy's Kea Swan. Indeed, Kea Swan seemed to be uh, stepping out in front of the rest. But um, I see that from this race, they were pretty much together. Um, not much difference between uh, the other positions. Well, Kylie Williams came out from Star Academy, came out quickly, but not been able to maintain her form. But it was all Kea Swan here, winning maybe by five to seven meters over the rest of the field. Looks as though it was uh, Rihanna Greenwich from Alpha Junior who came in second. But a nice run indeed here by Kea Swan of Grenada Junior Academy. The official results now indeed, Kea Swan 13.58 seconds, just outside of the record of 13.34. And Campbell of Alpha came in second, so it was not Rihanna, but Leah Campbell of Alpha who came in second. Well, we have an interesting race coming up, Charles. <laughs> it's the boys' 100 meter under 13, and there's some excitement in the commentary booth up here. As one of the competitors in this race, his dad is actually a cameraman for the TNR Communication. And we're going to see if his son can live up to expectations. He comes in with a high reputation, but we're going to go through the lane assignments. In lane one, we have Ramon Stewart of Westmoreland Junior School. Lane two, Isaiah St. Bernard, Gateway Christian Academy. Lane three, Jaden Strawn, Westmoreland Junior. Lane four, Cache Stephen, first choice. Lane five, Malachi Campbell, first choice. Lane six, Job Samuel, Alpha Junior School. Lane 7, Jared Alexander, Alpha Junior School. And Lane 8, Christian Thompson, Grenada Junior Academy. Well, we look forward to see who's going to win this one, but coming in with a very impressive time of 12.81 seconds is Kashi Stephen of the first choice. And his dad is up here with us in the commentary position, Gary Stephen, and he's all on his toes. He's peeping out through the window as well. He's pointing to the screen. He's all that excited, even more excited than Kashi himself. Kashi seems to be much more composed than his dad at the moment. Well, they're under starters orders now. The record time here, 12.81 seconds. Kashi already ran that uh, this year. So let's see if he can eclipse the record established in 2020 by Jamari Woodruff. Nice clean start here in the 100 meters under 13 boys. There they go. There goes Keisha Stephen from first choice out there in lane four. Stephen is pulling away from the rest of the field. There goes Stephen looking good indeed. Is it going to be a new record? He wins now. It's a very impressive run here by Stephen. We look forward to the official time that's going to be returned. But Charles, a very impressive run indeed. His dad maybe knew what he was talking about earlier on today. I see him pumping on that line. And indeed, he seemed very confident. Uh, he did a sign before he, he prayed. I don't know if the prayer helped. 12.93 <laughs> seconds, just outside of the record. So I think he has to go back and do some more work, but a very impressive run indeed by Kashi Steven here. We see him here, the grimace on his face. Maybe he just needs to do a lot more breath control, but he was really pushing hard for the finish line, really going after the record and dipping for the tape as well. His colleague from first choice, Malachi Campbell, came in second and the first choice one and two. Again, it's good to see these youngsters giving off all and pressing hard for the finish line. Kashi Steven here, the epitome of that, and winning comfortable for first choice. And then we have now event 37, the girls' 100 meter dash under 15. In lane one, Kylie George, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane two, Eva Dorell, Westmoreland Junior School. Lane three, Michaela, sorry, 
Michaelia Sayers, first choice. Lane four, Ronisha Lawrence, uh, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane five, Nala Peters, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane six, Tammy Joseph, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane five, Leela Fletcher, Alpha Junior School. And lane eight, Zarie Alec sorry, Xavier Alexis Parian, uh, Alpha Junior School. Well, it's going to be a battle between the two top schools in this year's t uh, competition, Grenada Junior Academy and St. Mary's Junior. So the battle in this race is definitely between Ronisha Lawrence of Grenada Junior Academy and uh, Nyla Peters of St. Mary's Junior. They perch there in lanes four and five. Uh, let's see if there's going to be any surprise in this one, as we saw earlier on today. Silence over the stadium as they're up and running here. Good start again. Who comes on now? Is it going to be Ronisha or is it going to be Nyla? It's very close to call, but here comes uh, uh, Nyla. Here comes Ronisha. Ronisha it is in lane four. Ronisha from the Grenada Junior Academy, and she wins it. Well, it looks as though from Alpha Junior, Alexis Parry again second in lane eight. But a good run here by uh, Ronisha Lawrence of the Grenada Junior Academy. And the official results are in, and indeed we have in first place Ronisha Lawrence of Grenada Junior Academy with a time of 15.23 seconds. We have in second position Zavi Alexis Parian of Alpha Junior School with a time of 15.43 seconds. And in third position, Tammy Joseph of Grenada Junior Academy, 15.80 seconds. Well, Grenada Junior Academy living up to expectations. Uh, the bigger of the athletes in the race as well, and she really established her dominance here and winning quite comfortable, comfortably in the end. But a surprise run here by Alexis Pariag of Alpha Junior out there in lane 8, outside of the peripheral vision of uh, Ronisha as well. And uh, being able to return a very good race is Alexis Pariag from Alpha Junior. And you know, sometimes the preliminary, re preliminary results uh, do inform, you know, Probably there was not a very good day on that day when they got the time. Um, and then, even if it was a good day, uh, there's a lot that could have happened between then and now in order to improve that time. So we're happy to see uh, these, what we might call wild cards, coming in and showing themselves up for, and showing themselves for well, who they really are. Alexis Pyrak didn't come in with the top six times. She, was, she had the seventh. That's Best what I'm time. saying. That's what I'm saying. And she was able to place second and cop the silver medal. Yeah. So um, it's just testimony of that, that she may have had a bad day during the preliminaries. Yeah. And uh, especially in the 100 meters, um, it, it's probably the most even race because there are no curves. And uh, so it's athlete per athlete as they match up on the track yeah. on that day. As we get set for the boys 100 meters under 15, um, we have the lane assignments. Ali Jaim Noel from first choice in lane one. Gary Noel of St. Mary's Junior in two. Therese Brave Boy from Alpha in three. Giovanni Green, St. Mary's in four. Dashon Ledlow, one to look at four, from Star Academy in five. Shamari Wildman, six. Odell Bruno, seven. And Nathaniel Jeremiah of Gateway in eight. We saw Dashon Ledlow earlier on winning in the uh, 60 meters, I think it was. Well, there we go. It's a false start. So they've been called back. Giovanni Green. So some of the athletes may be not aware that's the false start. The athletes out there in 7 and 8, Odell Bruno and Nathaniel Jeremiah. They've been called back now. But Giovanni Green is one to also look at for from St. Mary's Junior. Giovanni Green, we didn't see him earlier on. But we saw Dash on Ledlow. I think it was maybe in the 800 meters from Star Academy. So he seems to be their main athlete and competing maybe in all of the events in the under 15 as well as the open events for the Star Academy. But uh, Giovanni Green comes in with a uh, reputation of some sort and he will be hard pressed to beat here. And uh, we will see after the resumption because there was a false start to this one. The record 12.48 and this record has been established by Giovanni himself at the preliminaries. 
So let's see if we can better that time. It's event number 38. The record was held 12.6. That was by Quinnell Pear from St. Mary's Junior. But already for the season, uh, Giovanni has ran 12.48. So the previous record, 12.6 by Queen L. Pay. We recall Queen L. Pay over the years from St. Mary's Junior. And now he's uh, a schoolmate. Giovanni Green has eclipsed his record already in the preliminaries of 12.48 seconds. So let's see if Giovanni, Giovanni can lower that mark. As the green card has been given to the entire field. So it means that anybody who falls that now would receive the disqualification. Something that we don't like to see, especially at this age group level, it really affects the morale and the, 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 the motivation of the athletes when they are asked to leave the track. And for, I guess, the good of the games and for us who are viewing, we would love to see all eight athletes compete and complete the race as well. Sometimes these cards hurt the parents even more if uh, there's a disqualification. Of course, of course, it does. Because <laughs> imagine you, you left from nine this morning to come to see your son or daughter oh, yeah. and they get a disqualification. Oh my goodness, I could imagine the feeling of the parents and the godparents and the grandparents and even Everybody. those who are looking on from home. You know, I could understand that very much. So we hope that would not be the case and uh, they're going to line up again for this one. We have... Noel from First Choice, Noel also from St. Mary's Junior, Brave Boy from Alpha, Green from St. Mary's, Ledlow from Star Academy, Wildman from Alpha, Bruno from Star Academy, and uh, Jeremiah from Gateway Christian. So I would think, um, Charles, that Giovanni would get some competition here from uh, uh, Dyson Ledlow from Star Academy. Ledlow been featured earlier on today and uh, Ledlow is actually the winner in the boys 800 meter run open and so he is that versatile athlete that is doing the 100s I guess the 200s 400s and 800s and uh, the athletes have been called off the track now maybe they've been given some ta extra time to recuperate or to recompose themselves very interesting uh, is the question of uh, genetics when it comes to sports. Um, does a taller guy have a greater advantage over a shorter guy? Uh, because it basically it's, it's seen as a level playing field, but is it really a level playing field? I'm being a, a, a devil's advocate. Well, this is an interesting <laughs> conversation because <laughs> you would want to put in context a guy like a Usain Bolt with right. very long strides and another guy like a Ben Johnson. Right. Um, so you look at strides, length, and you also look at leg speed. Right. And if an athlete has that combination perfect, long strides and good leg speed, he should be a super athlete. But very rarely you see that happening. So you find the shorter athletes tend to have faster leg speed, right. and the taller athletes have longer strides. And who can manage that ability best <laughs> generally tends to be. So the taller athletes would have what many think would be a slower start because they have to really get up and go out. The shorter athletes tend to have a faster start. But then when they get into the drive phase, here's where the athlete with the longer stride, especially for the, the sprints, can really um, elevate and, and, and move forward. But um, over the longer distances, again, you might want to think that the longer strides might be in your favor. But it's how you manage what you have, I, I think, because we've seen cases where athletes with longer strides are not able to beat athletes with shorter strides and faster leg speed. Uh, Sean Lambert, for example, right. had a tremendous leg speed. And so he was able to beat much taller athletes with longer strides. Right. So that's the dynamics that we have to contend with between the faster leg speed and the longer strides. So essentially, it is not a level playing field. Well, the track is level. That's, <laughs> the, only, that's the only part that's level. <laughs> so they're back on the track. The competitors for the 100 meters on the 15 boys. You're witnessing the George F. Huggins Private Primary Schools Track and Field Championships 2023. We started on time today, exactly 1 p.m. We were called to order. And it's a, a good indication of what is to come today. 
So they're back there. Noel, Noel, Brave Boy, Green, Ledlow, Wildman, Bruno, and Jeremiah. Keep your eyes on the track. Keep your eyes towards the middle of the track. Lanes four and five is where we expect most of the speed to be coming from. And they're up and running. Let's see what happens here now. There they go. We're looking for Giovanni Green and Deshaun Ledlow. There goes Green from St. Mary's Junior. Ledlow is giving good chase for second. But Green, with a sizable lead here, wins this one. He dips for the tape. Ledlow in second. The rest of the field coming in some distance behind. But a good run here by Giovanni Green. Already establishing a new record of 12.48 seconds in the preliminaries. Let's see what time he returns here, Charles. But a good run indeed. Slowing down towards the tape. So he needs to maintain that form. 12.62, not as fast as the preliminaries. But uh, that would have been good to, to beat the old record that was established by uh, Queen El Pierre. No, Queen El Pierre would have run 12.6. And so Giovanni Green um, doing well still, even not breaking the record that he established earlier on this year. A good run of 12.62 seconds. And, did he, uh, and then again, I saw him basically... Uh, at first competing with the, 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 the one coming in second, but indeed it was about, what, a good five, five meters. meters. And to win by five meters in a 100 meters, it means that you're really not, you're not pushed. Had he had some more competition, had um, Deshaun, I think it's Deshaun, um, Ledlow, been on his heels, so to speak, and uh, had he had to dip for the tape. Because if you look back at the replay, you'll see that he actually slowed down for the tape. And in doing so, you'd have lost some valuable time that would have allowed him to run 12.62 seconds and not as fast as the 12.48 he ran earlier on today. So there's going to be another medal presentation ceremony. And uh, this time we'll have medal presentations for the 80 meter events and also the 100 meter events. And so what we would do, we would take a break here. We'll segue down to the stadium microphone, but stay with us for the medal presentation ceremony and we'll be back with you with more live track and field action as soon as it resumes on the track. Event number 31. The girls 80 meter dash on the nine division. Your bronze medalist finishing in a time of 13.52 seconds from Beacon Junior School, Daya John. Sorry, that's Dia John. Your silver medalist, finishing in a time of 13.12 seconds from Westmoreland Junior School, Sanjay Simon. And ladies and gentlemen, your gold medalist, finishing in a time of 12.85 seconds from Alpha Junior School, Jazian Johnson. Medal presentations for event number 32, the boys 80 meter dash on the nine division. In third position, finishing in a time of 13.04 seconds from Westmoreland Junior School, Kai Phillip. Your silver medalist, finishing in a time of 12.78 seconds from Grenada Junior Academy. Jehu Roberts and your gold medalist finishing in a time of 12.70 seconds from first choice junior school Caleb Pascal
Ladies and gentlemen, event number 33, the girls 100 meter dash on the elite division. Your bronze medalist, finishing in a time of 15.32 seconds from Grenada Junior Academy, Nequana Ned. Your silver medalist, finishing in a time of 14.85 seconds from Westmoreland Junior School, Dominique Joseph. And ladies and gentlemen, your gold medalist, finishing in a time of 14.66 seconds from St. Mary's Junior School, Connor Marie Marco. Next event, the event number 34, the boys 100 meter dash on the 11 division. Your bronze medalist, 15.25 seconds from first choice junior school, Jaden Bartholomew. Your silver medalist, 15.17 seconds from St. Mary's Junior School, Jaden Bain. And your gold medalist, 14.26 seconds from St. Mary's Junior School, Jonathan Labari. <laughs> Event number 35, the girls 100 meter dash on the 13 division. Ladies and gentlemen, your bronze medalist, 14.14 seconds. Westmoreland Junior School, Eliza Rose Benjamin. Your silver medalist, 14.07 seconds. Alpha Junior School, Leah Campbell. And your gold medalist, 13.58 seconds. Grenada Junior Academy, Kaya Swan. Event number 36, the boys 100 meter dash on the 13 division. Your bronze medalist, 14.14 seconds from Westmoreland Junior School, Jaden Stronton. Your silver medalist, 13.84 seconds from first choice junior school, Malachi Campbell. And ladies and gentlemen, your gold medalist, 12.93 seconds from first choice junior school, Kate Steven. <laughs> Event number 37, the girls, 100 meter dash on the 15 division. Your bronze medalist, 15.80 seconds from Grenada Junior Academy, Tammy Joseph. Silver medalist, 15.43 seconds from Alpha Junior School, Xavi Alexis Pariag. And ladies and gentlemen, your gold medalist, 15.23 seconds, Grenada Junior Academy, Ronisha Lawrence. And our final event in this medal presentation, event number 38, the boys 100 meter dash on the 15 division. Your bronze medalist, 14.47 seconds from Alpha Junior School, Tyrese Brave Boy. Silver medalist, 13.13 seconds from Star Academy, Dyson Ledlow. And ladies and gentlemen, your gold medalist, 12.62 seconds from St. Mary's Junior School, Giovanni Green. We say a special thank you to Mr. Cullen Peters for his assistance 
with this medal presentation and congratulations to all of our athletes. Do you need to send personal or commercial items to the U.S. or to other Caribbean islands? No problem. With scheduled flights and the best staff to help with all your logistics needs, AmeriJet International ensures that your freight arrives safely and on time. Perishables, hazardous materials, or dry cargo, we ship it all. Customer satisfaction is our priority. Let AmeriJet help you with your next cargo shipment. Call us today on 473-439-0093. That's 473-439-0093. 473-439-0093 or visit AmeriJet.com. So thank you very much, Roland, as we prepare for our next event on the track. For anyone who's keeping score, uh, first place earns 12 points to their respective schools. So first place earns 12, second place earns 8, third place 6, fourth place 5 points, fifth place 4 points. Sixth place, three points, seventh place, two points, and eighth place, one point. So every race counts, every point counts, and we'll have a point standing for you shortly. Okay, up next on the track is event 59. Viewers, we welcome you back to the live track and field action here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It's the George F. Huggins Private Primary School Games 2023. Moments ago, we had uh, the second medal presentation and uh, award ceremony. Um, the medals handed out there by the coordinator of sports, Mr. Curlin Peters. We're getting ready for event number 39, the girls' 80-meter dash for under seven. As you see them here in progress, and... Uh, it looks as though it's the athlete from St. Mary's Junior, Roberts. And uh, it's actually Jewel Radix and Roberts. It's very close to call between the two of them. But Jewel Roberts, Jewel Radix, I beg your pardon, she won the 40 meters. Uh, Roberts did not run in the 40 meters, but she came in with a better time than Jewel. And we see here is actually uh, Delon, we hope I get the name correct, Delon Roberts from St. Mary's Junior who won the event. And in second position was Jewel Radix of Grace Lutheran um, taking the second spot. But what, a, what an interesting situation was. If we look back at the event, very close to the end of the race, Jewel was in front and she stumbled a little bit and missed her stride. And uh, so Robert from St. Mary's Jr. was able to go past her. So it's an interesting situation here. But it seems as though it's a new record as well by uh, Roberts. The old record was 15.91, and the Roberts would have just run a much faster time here as we look back at the photo finish in the event here between the two. So Roberts 15.72, setting a new record. The old record would have been 15.91. I think um, the second position, 15.77, would have also broken the record. So both 
Joel Radix and uh, Delon Roberts would have would have broken the record, but the record would stand for Delon Roberts of St. Mary's Junior. The young boys are on the track now for the 80 meters on the seven. And uh, quickly we look at the lane assignments. The lane assignments, lane one, uh, Rennie Brown, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane two, Bryson Mendez, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane three, Stefan Johnson, first choice. Lane four, Kalik Nimrod. Uh, Kalik Be Nimrod. Beacon Junior. Beacon Junior School. Uh, lane five, Kazane Rouse, uh, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane six, Gianni Thomas of Westmoreland Junior School, Lane 7, Ethan Beggs of Gateway Christian Academy, and Lane 8, Tariq Batiste, St. Mary's Junior School. Well, Charles, I can tell you, Kalik Nimrod would be an obvious favorite here. He was also, he was actually the winner of the 40 meters, and he ran 8.15 seconds. He also comes in with the fastest time here for the 80 meters, but he would receive very, very strong challenge from Kazen Rose of Grenada Junior Academy. It's not much separated the two of them by, by the times that they have done in the preliminaries. So lanes four and five, definitely those two competitors there would be ones in, in contention for, for this event. Uh, is it strategic to put uh, those type of contentions um, in those similar lanes? Um, I'm seeing that a lot happening here today and uh, I'm just wondering. Well, they're up and running. Let's see what happens here, whether it's going to be Kalik Nimrod or Kazan Rouse. Uh, Kalik Nimrod from Beacon Jr. is actually in the lead. He's stumbling here. Here comes Roberts on the other side. And the stumble, he's able to recover and maybe winning it just ahead of Rouse. But uh, he fumbled somewhere about 70 meters in the event. But I think he still managed to win in the end. Kalik Nimrod from uh, Berian Jr. School may have just been the eventual winner. The official result is actually Rouse. Kazin Rouse, who actually won it, and Nimrod, with the stumble that he had there towards the end, uh, actually came in second. So an unfortunate situation there for Nimrod, already winning the 40 meters, having a, a stumble there on the track, and allowing Rouse to go past him just on the tip. Nice finish there by the young man, and uh, we do wait on the official times so it's 14.84 that was the official time and the record 14.52 so the record still stands uh, Kazan Rouse first Kalik Nimrod second as we look at the photo finish it that close it was but has it had it not been for that fumble that uh, Khalid had just about uh, maybe 90 meters in the event Rouse would have had to settle for second position, but Rouse being able to just clip him right on the tip there, Charles. Right. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, wonderful time here at the Karani James Athletic Stadiums at the George of F. Huggins Primary Schools Track and Field Championships 2023. Uh, if you're listening and you're in the diaspora, we welcome you. If you're just coming in, whether you are here or abroad, we thank you for joining in with us here today to celebrate our young athletes as they perform on this track. Well, the next event on the track is the girls 150 meters on the nine. And uh, we move away from the street events and there's going to be some curve now. The 150 meters on the nine girls. The record 22.99 established by Kylie Williams in 2019. An athlete to look out for in this one from Alpha Junior is Josiane Johnson. She already won the 80 meters earlier on today and uh, she will be featured in that event as well. Uh, Josiah Johnson of the Alpha Junior School. Right, Smith. As I was asking earlier, is it a strategic thing uh, when you're when you're organizing races to have uh, contenders within the lanes four and five? Well, the lane assignments are based on the times that you return 
in the preliminary. So the fastest time is the fastest set of times are shared between lanes three, four, and five. Most times we have the fastest athlete being placed in lane four, and then the second fastest in five, third fastest in three. So that's how the top three uh, lanes, lane assignments are. As we see a shot of some of the parents, um, these are parents that will have been here year after year after year. We see Brent McIntosh and we also see um, Cecil, Cecil being a former president of the, the PTA of St. Mary's Junior. And I'm sure they do not have any kids in the schools, but they're still here to support. Because the McIntoshes are now in PBC and I think Anglican High School. And uh, Cecil's son, I think, is also in PBC. But they're here again to support. And that is what happens when you establish that close relationship and that bond with the, the, the school, especially the private primary schools. Once a parent, always a parent. You never lose that status. <laughs> and you notice they're in their blue t-shirts as well, eh? so they're here to support St. Mary's Junior, of course. Most definitely. So we give you the little assignments for the girls 150 meters, and then we'll give you an update on the point standing. So in lane one, we have Haley Gooding from Grace Lutheran. Lane two, Sydney Joseph. Alpha, lane three, Latoya Dion, Beacon, lane four, Josiah Johnson, Alpha, from Westmoreland, Junior, Sanjay Simon, in five, in six is Tija Hamilton of First Choice, in seven, Dana Noel of Grenada Junior Academy, and lane eight, Dia John of Beacon Junior. All right, some interesting results here uh, when we check out the point standing uh, for the events thus far. As of event number 40, we have Grenada Junior Academy laid out front with a 321.5 points lead. Uh, we have St. Mary's Junior School leading, sorry. St. Mary's Junior School is in second so far, 319 lane three sorry third uh first choice junior school 268 fourth alpha junior school 215.5 fifth westmoreland junior school 204.5 sixth grace lutheran junior school uh 107 seventh beacon junior school 94.5 star academy 72 and Gateway Christian Academy 34. As we take you back to the live track action, we'll comment on the point standing in a moment. It's the 150 meters for the under nine girls. There they go, looking good. Making up the stagger already is Jajaz Johnson of Alpha Junior in the white and green and the pink spikes. She's striding nicely, go past Westmoreland Junior on her outside. But there goes Josiah Johnson. Jazzy and Johnson of Alpha Junior. She's going to win this one by 10 meters over Sanjay Simon of Westmoreland Secondary. And it looks as though first choice in uh, Tasia Hamilton may have just picked up the third position. But what an impressive run by Josiah Johnson of Alpha Junior School. And we did see uh, one of the athletes taking a fall just at the beginning of the race. Uh, that was really unfortunate, and we do hope that she is okay. That was so the, that was event number forty-one, the girls' one hundred and fifty meter dash under nine. A good run indeed, as was seen by uh, Johnson, Jazzy, and Johnson of Alpha Junior, and uh, uh, she was. The winner of the 80 meters earlier on today. We are with the official results. There we have it now, 23.56 seconds for Jazzy and Johnson. Sanjay Simon of Westmoreland Junior was second and Tija Hamilton of first choice in third. So a good run indeed by uh, Johnson. Already she has picked up two gold medals in these games, um, Charles. But just to go back on the results that you called moments ago, um, when we started today, there was only half a point separating Grenada Junior Academy and St. Mary's Junior. And after 40 events, that's just before the last event we saw moments ago, Grenada Junior Academy has pulled away from St. Mary's Junior. Grenada Junior Academy now on 321.5 points and the St. Mary's on 319. 
that's still like two and a half points so not much of a lead not much of a lead it's still very very close and they're gonna battle all the way to the last event i presume and that makes the relays etc a lot more interesting because it's high stakes here well the fans of grenada junior academy and st mary's junior i'm sure you're gonna have your voices might be gone by tomorrow your energy level might be down as well because there'll be a lot of supporting and cheering that you'd have to do today and of course i would also like to take the opportunity to recognize the teachers of the various institutions for the work that they've been putting in with the students and um, the support that they give um, teachers go above and beyond duty and sometimes they're very much like parents even outside of the school community so we want to appreciate the teachers at this point in time and uh, say hats off to you and we look forward to supporting you as you support our own so the boys 150 meter dash on the nine they're on the track now and uh, this event we will see in lane one joshua granger of first choice tyler walcott of beacon jehu roberts Grenada junior academy joel theodore st mary's junior caleb pascal he's from first choice kai phillip from uh, westmoreland junior shimar lynch from Grenada junior academy they're up and running and we have zicky st bernard of gateway let's see who comes up the turn first here we look towards the middle of the track is it going to be joel theodore from st mary's junior is not it's actually another athlete here from st mary's junior it's got jehu roberts he's actually jehu roberts in the lead jehu roberts he has his work cut out but he dips for the tape now and he wins over caleb pascal of first choice but a good run here by jehu he came off the turn in the lead maintained his form nicely was pressed to a certain extent extend by caleb pascal of first choice but being able to maintain his form and composure and winning this one was uh, Jehu. And I like the word you use to maintain uh, because it's very difficult sometimes, especially within the last 50 meters or so, to keep that up because that's when the burn start kicking in and that's when you, you have to push it and it's almost as if you can't go further. But once you maintain it, uh, it's highly likely that you're going to come, uh, come out successful, come out on top. Here we have the official results. Uh, first position, Jehu Roberts, 22.95 seconds. Caleb Pascal in second, first choice junior, 23.16. And Joel Theodore, Theodore of St. Mary's Junior School, 23.34 seconds. What is interesting here, Charles, is that in the 80 meters for the under nine boys, Caleb Pascal won over Jehu Roberts. And now that. we see a return of the positions in which Jehu Roberts wins the 150 meters, Caleb Pascal coming in second. So they're going to be a battle here again for maybe the divisional champion in this under nine category. Let's see what happens when they uh, compete in the other events later on today. Right. Competition amongst the under nine boys. As we get set for the under 11 girls, 200 meters. That's the next event on the track. In the lineup, we have in lane one, KD Walker of Grenada Junior Academy. Lane two, Akiva Walker, first choice. Lane three, Lemaya Francis, Grace, Grace Lutheran. Lane four, Connor Marie Monroe, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane five, Dominique Joseph, Westmoreland Junior School. Lane six, Naquana Ned, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane seven, Kamisha Alexander, first choice. And lane eight, Josiah Mitchell, St. Mary's Junior School. Well, the name Connor Mary Monroe should ring a bell for you. She was actually the winner in the 100 meters for the under 11s. And uh, Dominic Joseph would have placed second. So these two actually comes in, come in with the, the best times so far. So Monroe comes in with 30.06 and uh, Dominic Joseph comes in with 30.48. So again, lanes four and five is where we expect the winners to come from. But they obviously would receive some good challenge from Limaya Francis from Grace Lutheran. She's there in lane three. And uh, also we should see uh, some good challenge maybe coming from uh, Nikona Ned of Grenada Junior Academy out there in lane six, I think it is. S yes, indeed lane six. 
And as um, I Akiva Walker is also one to look out for in, in this race as well. Akiva Walker from the first choice junior. They say num numbers never lie. And these numbers are showing. So let's see what we would have today for this event, event number 43, the girls' 200 meter dash under 11. There you see them all energetic. And look, look at the energy of the artist in lane five. That's Dominic Joseph. You oh, know, yeah. She knows she has her work cut out for her. She knows Conor Mary Monroe might be the obvious favorite in lane four, but she's there, you know, pumping and maybe trying to win the psychological warfare as well over Conor Mary Monroe by just um, flexing the muscles and thing and, and, and maintaining her composure. You know, that psychological warfare at the lineup is very key. I recall athletes who would have competed at the international level for Greater that would tell you that, you know, they actually bullied on the starting line by the, the more muscular athletes and these guys come and flex the muscles right in front of them and so on. But they're down on their marks now. We will see the start of the girls, 100 meters on the 11. And again, uh, they're up and running a nice clean start. Conor Marie Monroe is already making up the stagger on Dominic. She goes past Dominic now. Conor Marie Monroe is looking great indeed. Conor Marie Monroe of St. Mary's Jr. comes up the turn in the lead. But Dominic is giving good chase. She's making a good run back here. Dominic Joseph, Conor Marie Monroe in the lead for St. Mary's Jr. Dominic Joseph on the outside, but Monroe is going to win this one. She's pulling away now. She recovers nicely. Dominic is tiring, but Conor Marie Monroe wins it. Dominic Joseph second, and in third, it looks as though the athlete from the Grenada Junior Academy, the corner Ned, a good run indeed by these athletes in the, in the 200 meters under 11 girls. And Conor Marie, of course, had a very powerful form. She maintained her structure as she came down the final stretch. Um, I like to see how she... Uh, was steady. Uh, the second athlete kind of was a little more, a bit wobbly. Could have affected the speed um, and, of course, the acceleration. So 29.8 seconds it is. 29.73 is a new record established by Conor Marie Monroe. The old record being 30.06 seconds that she established in uh, the preliminaries earlier this year. So she actually broke her own record. And it, it tells you that uh, she, she brought her A game when it mattered, ma matters most. So congrats to Conor Marie Monroe for establishing a new record in the 200 meters for the under 11s. And uh, Dominic Joseph, 30.78 would have been just outside of the record as well. But a good run. We understand that these two athletes are indeed good friends from the Westmoreland Junior and uh, the St. Mary's Junior. That's nice. The corner Ned from Grenada Junior Academy. So from the looks of that, I believe St. Mary's Junior may have just gone past uh, Grenada Junior Academy in terms of the point standing. We're going to update you when we get the official point standing. But before those last two races, there was only maybe a point and a half, or two and a half points, I beg your oh, pardon, right. separating... Uh, Grenada Junior Academy in the lead over St. Mary's Junior. So it's a real competition between those two schools. First Choice Junior is also there in the mix, some distance behind, but not too far in contention as well because they're on 268 and we know what can happen in the relays based on the amount of points that are awarded for the relay events. And of course we're getting ready for the next event, the boys 200 meter dash under 11. And they're already off, ladies and gentlemen. So the 200 meters, we're looking here for Jonathan Nabari of St. Mary's Junior. He's in lane four. Also, Jaden Bain of St. Mary's Junior in five. And on the inside is Bartholomew Moore of first choice. But uh, it's St. Mary's Junior in Jaden Bain and uh, Jonathan Nabari. Bain and Nabari is very close to call, but it looks as though it's Nabari in lane four. Bain will have to settle for second and Bartholomew Moore of first choice for third. But a good run indeed. These two athletes were going stride for stride, neck for neck, until it was the strength and determination of Jaden Bain, sorry, Jonathan Labari, that emerged, and he was the eventual winner of the 200 meters for the under 11 boys. And that's the push we were previously talking about, where you have that athlete on your heel, and you know that it's uh, all game in, otherwise you're going to lose out. So 29.61 for Labari, and... Uh, his teammate, Bain, would have placed second. And that was the exact same results that they had in the 100 meters. Labari first, Bain second. And uh, 
we see in third position Jalen Moore. So the same positions in the 100 meters have been returned in the top three positions again in the 200 meters between Labari, Bain and Moore. So St. Mary's Jr. would have extended the lead now over Grenada Jr. Academy and uh, I'm sure you the viewers and those who are here at the stadium are keeping a very close watch on the point standing between those two schools. We're now ready for event number 45, the girls 200 meter dash under 13. We have in the lineup in lane one, Azaria Phillip of Grenada Junior Academy. Lane two, Liana Laobatista of St. Mary's Junior School. Uh, lane three, Leah Campbell, Alpha Junior School. Lane four, K Kaya Swan, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane five, Kylie Williams, Star Academy. Lane six, Eliza Rose Benjamin, Westmoreland Junior School. Lane seven, Rihanna Greenwich of Alpha Junior School. And lane eight, Kedaya McQueen of St. Mary Junior School. Well, Kaya Swan is a favorite here from the Grenada Junior Academy, and she has an opportunity to erode some of the points that were scored moments ago by the St. Mary's Junior. And uh, she already won the 100 meters, and we expect that uh, she would do well here in the 200 meters. Kaya Swan of the Grenada Junior Academy. The record for this event, 27.09 seconds, uh, set in 2016 by Kayla Mitchell. So they're up and running, a good clean start here, and let's see who comes up the turn first. Kaya Swan definitely want to look out for in lane four from Grenada Junior Academy. And on her other side is uh, Kyle Williams from Star Academy. But here goes Kaya Swan. That's Swan in the lead there for you from Grenada Junior Academy. She's getting some good challenge here from Westmoreland Secondary on the outside, but Swan is going to win this one easily. Westmoreland Secondary in uh, second, that's Eliza Rose Benjamin, and it looks as though it's Leah Campbell of Alpha Junior who would have picked up the third position. But again, true to form is Kaya Swan from the Grenada Junior Academy. 27.80 seconds just outside of the record and Eliza Rose Benjamin of Westmoreland Jr. in second and Leah Campbell of Alpha in third. Kylie Williams um, had a good start of an event but faltered towards the end and had to settle for the fourth position. There are athletes uh, who would come on and you know that they're going to be performing. You know what to expect. You have a great anticipation and of course uh kaya swan is one that is one that does not disappoint well leah campbell would have placed second in or uh, she placed second in the 100 meters now she had to settle for third and eliza rose who came third in the 100 meters um elevates her position now to second but kaya swan been very consistent at the top of the podium as we get ready for the next event which is the 200 meters on the 13 boys And we have the lineup here for event number 46, the boys 200 meter dash under 13. Josiah Francis, St. Mary's Junior School in lane one. Lane two, Jared Alexander, Alpha Junior School. Lane three, Jaden Strong, Westmoreland Junior School. Lane four, Cache Stephen, first choice. Lane five, Malachi Campbell, first choice. Lane six, Job Samuel, Alpha Junior School. Lane 7, Kristen Thompson, Grenada Junior Academy. And Lane 8, Alec Forsyth, uh, the Beacon Junior School. They are on the starters' orders. On the 13 boys. Uh, there they go. The under 13 boys looking good already. Is the athlete out there from the first choice. Looks as like Cache Steven. His dad is jumping up in the stands as well. Kashe Steven, the winner of the 100 meters, comes up the turn in the lead. And powering down the home straight is Kashe Steven. There goes Steven. 
pumping hard the arms going all the way up here he has a 20 meter lead over his compatriot from first choice cash Stephen wins it in second is going to be malashi campbell also a first choice and uh, another impressive run by cash Stephen. cash Stephen is going after the record of 25.87 established in 2019 by queen el pair let's see what time he returns 26.34 outside of the record Malachi Campbell in second and uh, Jaden Strawn of Westmoreland Jr. in third again the athlete maybe lacking some competition in the race Charles he was not really pushed hard towards the end there was a, th a 20 meter gap there about between himself and his colleague from um, from Alpha Jr. and maybe had he been pushed a little bit more from first choice I beg your pardon he could have um, returned a better time Indeed, uh, as we saw with the uh, female athlete who just broke the record, um, she was running against herself um, at the same time. And I think it's a bit difficult to run against your, your own time, um, knowing that, uh, you know, the competition is not really behind you. Um, but, of course, in a competition like this, you would have to put yourself out as best as you can, uh, regardless. But, of course, the adrenaline flow, that comes with someone on your heel is a lot different from when you have that stretch in front. And there are some athletes that are big day events, big day athletes that would actually bring the A game on the big day itself oh, yeah. and, and, and really push you hard. Um, but Kashi Steven out there by himself as the girls get ready for the under 15 200 meters, the under starters orders. Ronisha Lawrence is there from the Grenada Junior Academy. She's expected to do well. She is expected to win as well. She already won at the 100 meters. Let's see what happens here as they go around the turn. And already Lawrence is making up the stagger on the athlete there from the St. Mary's Junior. Ronisha Lawrence in lane four comes up the turn in the lead. It's going to be hard to catch her now. Ronisha Lawrence from the set from the Renita Junior Academy in the lead. She's pumping hard. Heading down that home street and heading towards the finish line. It looks as though first choice is in second outside there in lane six. But Ronisha Lawrence wins it here now. Second looks like Alpha in Leah Fletcher in lane three. And she may have just clipped uh, Michaelia Sayers of first choice for that second position. But again, another good run by Ronisha Lawrence of Grenada Junior Academy. I noticed something though that uh, some athletes they slow down just in front of the line how does that affect them well that definitely affects the time and it, it happens for maybe various reasons one the lack of competition two the lack of proper finishing and proper technique to run through the line your coaches always tell you to run through the line so you pick a point ahead of the finish line that you run towards and never slow down towards the tape because we've seen many athletes lose races right on the tape when they either up to slow down or they're just out of gas, so to speak, and they get eclipsed on the tape. But a good run by Ronisha Lawrence. That's her second gold medal for the day. Um, Leah Fletcher actually came in second with a dip on the line over Nyla Peters of St. Mary's Jr. and Michaelia Sayers picking up the fourth position. And already we have the boys for event number... 48 the boys 200 meter dash under 15 in the lineup and we have in lane one nathaniel cobb grenada junior academy lane two nathaniel jeremiah gateway christian academy lane three tyrese brave boy alpha junior school lane four giovanni green st mary's junior school lane five Deshawn ledlow star academy lane six shermari wildman alpha junior school lane seven Odell Bruno, Star Academy, and Lane 8, Gary Noel, St. Mary's Junior School. Well, it's going to be another battle between Giovanni Green and Dershon Ledlow. Green from St. Mary's Junior and Ledlow from Star Academy. They've been going 1-2 so far in the events that they have competed against earlier on today. And uh, all eyes will be on them in the middle of the track again in lanes four and five and Therese Brave Boy who's also there in lane three from Alpha Junior would offer some competition too in this race. So it's a nice field here. Um, all of the athletes 
very impressive in the preliminaries and we expect to see them returning very good times and a very competitive event. They're on the starters orders, they're on the mark. Let's see who wants this one more. We have Cobb, Jeremiah, Brave Boy, Green, Ledlow, Wildman, Bruno and Noel. Immense concentration by the athletes. Kept in the set position for quite some time. Called up now by the starter. It's good to see them maintaining their composure. Nobody actually breaking the ranks in the set position. Very often you see when athletes have been kept a little longer in the set position, somebody um, jumps out. Or well, these athletes have been able to uh, maintain their composure and, and, and not being too aggressive on the start. But to be honest, it's very difficult to maintain a composure, especially with that heart pumping and that uh, adrenaline going through so your veins. Kudos to them indeed. They back down one more time. The 200 meters under 15 boys. I can imagine a very tense moment for these youngsters. But they're up and running this time. It's a nice clean start. Let's see what happens here. Giovanni Green in lane four. Dayashon Ledlow in five. Here comes Green. Giovanni Green from St. Mary's Junior. Led low on the outside, but Green comes up the turn in the lead. And he's pushing hard. He's giving all that he's got here. Led low is maybe 10 meters behind him. Is Giovanni Green of the St. Mary's Junior School who wins this one now. Led low comes in second. And it looks as though it's uh, Thierry's Brave Boy from Alpha Junior S uh, School that comes in third. And again, Giovanni Green establishing his dominance in this category winning comfortably indeed 25.38 the winning time for Giovanni Green Dash on Ledlow in second Brave Boy in third and uh, Nathaniel Jeremiah in fourth so that's the second gold medal for Giovanni Green and in the case of Ledlow he has one gold medal today and two silver medals he was also the winner of the 800 meters so as I mentioned earlier, he seems to be that uh, monster athlete for uh, the uh, Star Academy. And you know, some of these schools that have very small uh, population, so to speak, you have one super athlete who basically wins everything. Right. One, two, four, eight, long jump, high jump. He's that athlete that can do everything for his school, Star Academy. Let's see how his endurance and stamina goes as we see. A nice cross-section of the fans who are here to support the kids. The stands have been, the patrons have been coming in the numbers. And uh, this is the Georgia Huggins Private Primary School Games 2023. Ten schools competing. A battle between the top two schools, that's Grenada Junior Academy and the St. Mary's Junior. As we segue into what's happening in our surroundings here, a beautiful shot of one of the cruise liners that is nicely here in Port St. George major factor for the national economy we hope that some of them may journey across to the national stadium to witness these youngsters if there are some ardent uh, track and field fans we may just see one or two of them here this afternoon I did uh, get to hear some of them speak and I did pick up a bit of French in, 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 in some cases I'm not too sure if I heard a little German in there as well so you can tell where they're coming from. Um, in a short while, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be seeing the intermission, sorry, the medal presentation, and um, we'll also have intermission. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. There's much to look forward to. Please feel free to refresh yourselves. Grab yourself some fruta, some ribena. Take advantage of some of the specials that Wins has on for today.
Do you need to send personal or commercial items to the U.S. or to other Caribbean islands? No problem. With scheduled flights and the best staff to help with all your logistics needs, AmeriJet International ensures that your freight arrives safely and on time. Perishables, hazardous materials, or dry cargo. We ship it all. Customer satisfaction is our priority. Let AmeriJet help you with your next cargo shipment. Call us today on 473-439-0093. That's 473-439-0093. Or visit AmeriJet.com.
Medal presentation for event number 39, the girls 80 meter dash on the seven division. In third position, from Grenada Junior Academy, finishing in a time of 16.63 seconds, Madison Thomas. In second position, finishing in a time of 15.77 seconds, from Grace Lutheran School. Jewel Radix and winning this event in a time of 15.72 seconds from St. Mary's Junior School, Delaney Roberts. Event number 40, the boys 80 meter dash on the seventh division. In third position, finishing in a time of 15.23 seconds from a small and junior school, Gianni Thomas. In second position, finishing in a time of 14.85 seconds from Beacon Junior School, Kalik Nimrod. And in first position, finishing in a time of 14.84 seconds from Grenada Junior Academy, Kazane Rouse. Event number 41, the girls 150 meter dash on the nine division. In third position, in a time of 25.58 seconds, from First Choice Junior School, Taija Hamilton. Second position, in a time of 24.67 seconds, from Westmoreland Junior School, Sanjay Simon. And in first position, 23.56 seconds, from Alpha Junior School, Jazian Johnson. Event number 42, the boys 150 meter dash on the nine division. In third position, from St. Mary's Junior School, finishing in a time of 23.3 seconds, Joel Theodore. In second position, finishing in a time of 23.16 seconds, from First Choice Junior School, Caleb. gentlemen winning this event and establishing a new record 29.73 seconds St. Mary's Junior School Connor Marie Monroe
Event number 44, the boys 200 meter dash under 11 division. In third position, finishing in a time of 31.52 seconds from First Choice Junior School, Jalen Bartholomew Moore. In second position, finishing in a time of 29.86 seconds from St. Mary's Junior School, Jaden Bain. And in first position, finishing in a time of 29.61 seconds from St. Mary's Junior School, Jonathan Labari. Event number 45, the girls 200 meter dash on the 13th division. In third position, finishing in a time of 28.68 seconds from Alpha Junior School, Leah Campbell. In second position, finishing in a time of 28.52 seconds from Westmoreland Junior School, Eliza Rose Benjamin. And in first position, Finishing in a time of 27.80 seconds from Grenada Junior Academy, Kaya Swan. Have you ever felt like giving it all away when nothing seemed to happen? You turn around and say, I Event number 46, the boys 200 meter dash on the 13th division. In third position, finishing in a time of 28.35 seconds from Westmoreland Junior School, Jaden Strun. In second position, finishing in a time of 27.86 seconds from First Choice Junior School, Malachi Campbell. And in first position, finishing in a time of 26.34 seconds from First Choice Junior School, Kate Stevens. Event number 47, the girls 200 meter dash on the 15 division. In third position, finishing in a time of 33.40 seconds from St. Mary's Junior School, Nala Peters. In second position, finishing in a time of 33.01 seconds from Alpha Junior School, Layla Fletcher. And in first position, finishing in a time of 31.56 seconds from Grenada Junior Academy, Ronisha Lawrence. And our final event in this medal presentation, event number 48, the boys 200 meter dash under 15 division. In third position, finishing in a time of 29.15 seconds from Alpha Junior School, Tyrese Brave Boy. In second position, finishing in a time of 26.42 seconds from Star Academy, Dyson Ledlow. And in first position, in a time of 25.38 seconds from St. Mary's Junior School, Giovanni Green. We say a special thank you to Mrs. Alexis Brown, the general manager of Huggins Pharmaceutical Division.
Grenada Police Force. So naturally, we'll be looking at uniformity, discipline, overall coordination, among others, as we prepare for the march past. Our eyes right will be taken by uh, Mrs. Anya Chow Chung, the CEO of George F. Huggins, and Miss Jasmine Miller. She's the secretary of the Grenada Private Schools Association.
Remind this officially the March pass and intermission at this time. The teams are won in parade in alphabetical order. Out front we see the green and white representing the Alpha Junior School. Red and white, Beacon Junior School. The orange and white, First Choice Junior School. The gray and white, we see some turquoise in the mix. That's Gateway Christian Academy. Purple and white, that's the Grace Lutheran School. White and blue. We have the Grenada Junior Academy. Top white, blue bottoms. They're followed by the St. Mary's Junior School. In the turquoise and white, we have the Star Academy. And the final team on parade in the blue with white trim, we have the Westmoreland Junior School.
Flaming Hot, First Church Junior School, decked out in orange and white. Here they come, it's the Gateway. Gray and white with some turquoise. It's the Gateway Christian Academy. Make some noise for the Gateway Christian Academy. Down they come is the purple and white. The team of the Grace Lutheran School. Eleven is the Grace Lutheran School. Make some noise. We're getting set to witness the eyesight of the Grenada Junior Academy. Let's hear it for the Grenada Junior Academy and their eyes, right? GJ looking to reclaim the title this year, not just in the March Pass competition. The Athletics Championship. Drivers number one, here they come. Is the white and blue of the St. Mary's Junior School.
is right of the St. Mary's, St. Mary's Junior School. Looking to take not just the Athletics Championship, but they're going for the March Pass competition as well. Next up on the track is the Turquoise, Turquoise and White of the Star Academy. It's the eyes right of the Star Academy. Let's hear it for the turquoise and white of the Star Academy. We get set for the final T1 parade. The blue, the blue and white of the Westmoreland Junior School. Eyes right of the West Wall and Junior School. It's the official ice front of the West Wall at Junior School. The final. The final of the nine teams participating in competition this year. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear a round of applause for all of the nine participating schools. Let's show some appreciation for the efforts and the hard work. Commitment and dedication of the students, the athletes, teachers, coaches. I want to say thank you to Mrs. Anya Chow Chow, the general manager of Georgia Hoggins Company Guinea Limited, and Ms. Jasmine Miller, the secretary of the Guinea Private Primary Schools Association. Thank you for adjudicating the eyes right. The competition is being judged by our officers of the Royal Guinea Police Force. And we take in the styles and sounds of the GBSS Trump Corps.
So we continue to take in the musical stylings of the GBSS drum corps. They are accompanied today by teacher, Mr. Martin Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, the GBXS Drum Corps. Let's put our hands together for the boys of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Say a special thank you to our young men for their participation today. It's the 2023 Huggins Private Primary School Championships. So our intermission is winding down and we'll be heading back to the track in just a few moments. But while we're officially on intermission, I'd like to remind you of the specials currently ongoing. Those specials led by our title sponsor for today, George F. Huggins. So we have a three for five special on Fruta Cool Kids. We have a three for 10 special on LLB.
We also have a three for ten special on jam rings, biscuits. So a little something to munch on, a little something to drink as we refresh ourselves within this intermission period. And for those of you needing a little bit of energy, we have a LucasAid special on as well. Buy two, get one free. LucasAid. Or you can get a three pack for $10. Or a case of 24 for 80. The Huggins booth is located downstairs. So feel free to patronize. Grab yourself a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, one event could change this point standing. One gold medal could change this point standing. Every race counts. Every point counts. 385.5 points. Your defending champion, St. Mary's Junior School which only means out front 391 points grenada junior academy It's the 2023 Huggins Private Primary School Championship. We say a special thank you to George F. Huggins for sponsoring this year's games. We might 
witness history. There are two questions looming over today's games. There are two questions looming over today's games. Will St. Mary's Junior School make it number eight in a row? Will St. Mary's Junior School make it number eight in a row? Are the boys from St. Mary's and the girls from St. Mary's going home with the championship this year? That's question number one. But question number two. From the boys and girls in orange and the boys and girls in green and the other boys and girls in blue and white today Will the 2023 Huggins Private Primary School Championships go to G.J.A.? Time alone will tell. First choice junior is not to be counted out there in third position. We've seen what the likes of Alpha Junior School can do on the track. They're sitting in fourth position. And as Mrs. Chow Chung reminded us, every single athlete in every race drives our champions forward. So everyone has a part to play. Ladies and gentlemen, the action is about to heat up. And as a friend of mine used to say, things are going to get rather coconious. It's the Huggins Private Primary School Championships 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just about approaching the end of our intermission. Our officials are getting back to their stations. We want to say good evening and thank you to the members of the Starters Association for the work that they do so tirelessly over this entire athletic season. We want to say good evening and thank you to the medical team, MedTech Grenada. Sometimes you take these things for granted and we don't know the work that goes in behind the scenes. We want to say thank you to all of the officials working so hard, so diligently to make things tick. 
Way over in the athletes' village. Call room one, call room two. Call room one, our chief. Our chief over in that area, Tanika Behari. We want to say good evening and thank you to you. Maureen Thomas, Helen Brathwaite, Connie Belfon. Ladies, we say thank you so much for the work that you do. Call room number two, Elizabeth Perriman, Arlene Williams, Raquel Hood, Lushana Daniel, Cameron Mathlin, Colin Alexander, Michael Depredine. Folks, we thank you so much. We thank you so much. Photo finish. The guys working hard to ensure that you get the splits. Sir Albert Joseph, Obadeli Joseph, Tagon Peter Kidd. You may or may not be seeing them, but they're working diligently behind the scenes. Our secretariat. Our secretariat. We say thank you to Miss Jasmine Miller, Sir Tiba Benoit. So many persons that you do not see, but their contributions are immeasurable, integral to all that is done, and to ensure that these games run off smoothly and successfully. Good evening, and thank you to meet coordinator, Mr. Kester Elcock, technical director, Mr. Ronald Charles. Meet Director, Mr. Junior Brave Boy. Assistant Meet Director, Mr. Anthony Curtin. Gentlemen, you say thank you. Good evening and thank you. We're getting set for the restart and the second half of the action in the Huggins Private Primary School Games 2023. You restart with the 300 meters under 11 girls. Athletes are preparing and they're getting set to take the positions on the track again. Good evening and thank you to Mr. Jerry Alexis, track referee, the official track judge. Track marshals, Mr. Desmond Noel, Mr. Anisha Frank. Track umpires, Mr. Kessie Phillip, Nemron Moses, Ronnie Joseph, Zakita Mitchell. Terran Pierre. The equipment manager, Mr. Gary Felix. The assistant equipment manager, Mr. Kevin Douglas. All of the officials. A big thank you and welcome to Mr. Keith Williams, the finish line coordinator. You normally see him at the finish line waving the flags. Making things tick. But again, thank you to officials and sponsors who come on board. Grenell Spring Water, Flow, National Lotteries Authority, Grenada Cooperative Bank Limited, Digicel, Republic Bank Grenada Limited. And of course, our title sponsor, George F. Hoggins and Company, Grenada Limited. Is the Private Primary School Games 2023. We get set to resume on the track with the girls 300 meters under 11.
So we're about to witness the start of our next event, the girls 300 meter dash on the 11 division. Your record for this event, 49.91 seconds set by Dominique Joseph. Dominique will be running out of lane number four today, ladies and gentlemen. It's the start of we the welcome world. you back to the live we track and field action here at the Kirani James Analytics Stadium. It's actually the start of the, the 300 back. meters for the under 11 girls. And we have in this one here uh, Lacqua Mitchell Monroe. Um, that's Connor Murray Monroe, one to definitely look out for. Dominic Joseph is another one. Akiva Walker. Uh, Nicola Ned, Lemaya Francis, and Kamisha Alexander. As they come around the bend here to head into the straightway, it looks as though it's Connor Marie Monroe. She has some good challenge on the outside. But Connor Marie Monroe from St. Mary's Jr. looks like the winner here. And uh, Dominic Joseph of Westmoreland Jr. is going to pick up the second. And that's a, a recurring feat that we saw from these competitors in all of the events. Connor Marie Monroe winning and uh, Dominic Joseph coming in second. Uh, St. Mary's Jr., Westmoreland Jr., first and second on officially. So we welcome you back and to bring you the live commentary, myself, Leslie Smith, and together with me, we have Alistair Charles. Alistair, good run again by Connor Marie Monroe from St. Mary's Jr. School. She never seems to disappoint uh, in, in, in her performance. And once again, we appreciate your presence and participation as we stream live right from the Karani James Athletic Stadium. So for those of you who may be just joining us, um, during the intermission, we had uh, the beautiful display from the competing schools, the March Fast competition, and all of the schools were nicely adorned and had their uh, formations and, 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 and different displays, a, a spectacle indeed from the various schools. Obviously, some schools look more prepared than others, but a, 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 good, a good representation from the schools in terms of the March Pass. Um, for again, and for those of you jo just joining us, just to give you some indications as to the colors of the different schools. So A Plus Institute, they in blue and yellow. We haven't seen them today, really. Alpha Junior, white and green. Beacon Junior, red and white. First Choice Junior, orange. Gateway Christian Academy, gray and white. Grace Lutheran School, purple and white. Grenada Junior Academy, blue and white. Star Academy, turquoise. St. Mary's Junior, blue and white. And Westmoreland Junior, blue and white. Already in the lineup, we have the boys for the 300 meter dash under 11, event number 50. In lane one, Eric Antoine, Westmoreland Junior School. Lane two, Ziomar. Alert, first choice. Lane three, Bartholomew Moore, first choice. Lane four, Jonathan Labari, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane five, Ethan Gonpot, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane six, Sean Park, Alpha Junior School. Lane seven, Reese Peters, Alpha Junior School. And lane eight, Zion Harris, Grenada Junior Academy. There you have it. And maybe we can give a points update too at the intermission. After 48 events, Gateway Christian Academy was on 46 points. Star Academy, 87 points. Beacon Junior, 102.5 points. Grace Lutheran, 115. Westmoreland Junior, 242.5 points. Alpha Junior, 267.5 points. First Choice Junior, 326 points. And the two top schools who came in today at the beginning with only half a point separating them. We have in second position St. Mary's Junior on 385 and a half and Grenada Junior Academy on 391. As the next event is in progress now, the 300 meters on the 11 boys. And already looking good is Jonathan Labari from St. Mary's Junior. Ethan Gunpot is also there. But up front is the athlete from Grenada Junior Academy. It looks like Zion Harris out there in lane 8. And making a good run on his inside end now is uh, Jonathan Labari of St. Mary's Jr. As they run the final turn here to come into the home straight. A close one here between Jonathan Labari and Zion Harris. But here comes Labari now on the inside. Jonathan Labari it is. 
has good good challenge here from uh, Ethan Gunpot, Jonathan Labari and Gunpot. Labari and Gunpot, one two for St. Mary's Junior. What a good run here, but obviously Charles, Ethan Gunpot, he did a lot of the early running coming out of there in lane six and really doing a lot of the bulwark, so to speak, in this event. And he had to keep it up. I mean, it was a very difficult thing to... And you could see uh, his face and the, the expression on his face when he was coming up to the last 50 meters or so, uh, how much he was exerting himself to maintain his position. Well, Jonathan Labari had his work cut out there for him. He came in as the favorite with the fastest time. We didn't see... Uh, uh, Bartholomew Moore, our first choice featuring heavily in this one here. As we look back to the official results here, Jonathan Labari, 47.58 seconds. And Ethan Gunpot in second. Moore was actually in third from first choice. The top three winners in this event. I want to comment on something here, Charles. I, w I went downstairs during the intermission and the vibe that is downstairs. It's different to what I see in other sports I've covered for years. So I go to Intercall and you see the, the past pupils in the little sections and the banter is going on. Right. And you go to other prim primary schools and you see, you know, the supporters are there. But what I see downstairs today is tremendous. So there's a sea of blue, a sea of green, a sea of orange, a sea of red. And it's not just past pupils, but it's the parents, the grandparents, the godparents. And they have that vibe and the t-shirts with all the slogans on it. And it's just a different kind of atmosphere. Very electric and very, very supportive of the youngsters. And that's the type of atmosphere that uh, is promoted by sporting events on a whole. Uh, remember, we came from a very long stint when there wasn't any sporting event. And now we're having um, sports once more. We could gather once more. Um, and I think the approach and the love and the passion for sports has significantly augmented over the last few years. So a while ago, we saw the blue section. Now we've seen some, some pieces of the green section. And I'm sure Richie would give us maybe the orange and red section sometime in the broadcast. But it's just to bring out the point how these parents and grandparents and godparents and the extended family and the community is here to out. support these youngsters. They go all out. It's different that you see in any, in any other sports, I would think, yeah. here in Grenada, even at the National Stadium. So this now looks like the, the orange section, right? Which would be the, I think, the alpha section. The first choice first section, choice. I beg your pardon. Right. That's the first choice section. And then there's the red, the red section, which is the Beacon Junior. You know, so every, sco every school has their little posse, so to speak. And there we see the red section now. So this should be the Beacon Junior section. Right. You know? And we have that right through all the, 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 the stands. A tremendous atmosphere here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. The next event, event number 51, the 400 meters for the under 13 girls, Charles. And I must say, uh, the events are running off really smoothly. We are on time and uh, the games are running really nice. Well, that's a feature we have to talk about. The games actually started promptly at 1 p.m. And we were, we were keeping track of the events. They were run off on time. The intermission was within the time allocated for it. The resumption, everything. And they were on course to finish at 6 p.m. And I'm sure they will be able to achieve that. Well, let's look and see. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're hoping for great things happening here today. And we have here for event number 51, the girls' 400 meter dash, under 13. The lineup in lane one Isla Scott from Beacon Junior School. Lane two, Jada Gill, Westmoreland Junior School. Lane three, Kaya Swan, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane four, Leah Campbell, Alpha Junior School. Lane five, Eliza Rose Benjamin, Westmoreland Junior School. Lane six, Kylie Williams, Star Academy. Lane 7, Kedia McQueen, uh, St. Mary's Junior School. And Lane 8, Liana Lao Batista. And she's from St. Mary's as well. Well, what we've noticed, Charles, is that there are three athletes principally that are responsible for Grenada Junior Academy being at the top of the table. And that's Lawrence, that's um, Jehu, and now we have here Swan. 
Swan is in this race here in lane three. She did not come in with the fastest time, but she already won the 100 and the 200. Right. And she has Leah Campbell of Alpha, who came in with a better time than her in this race. But she has been, that's Kaya Swan, she has been one of the athletes that has contributed a lot to Green Legend Academy's top position at the moment, together, as I mentioned, with Lawrence and, and Jehu. And uh, we yet to see what will happen in the relays, but uh, these athletes, again, will be featured and would need to be in good health to ensure that Grenada Junior Academy can dethrone St. Mary's. But they're on the starters orders, the 400 meters under 13 girls. Scott, Gill, Swan, Campbell, Benjamin, Williams, McQueen, and uh, La Batista. But there they go, nice clean start here. Um, let's see who's gonna make up the stagger early, but looking good already is the athlete from Latotec Westmoreland Junior, Eliza Rose Benjamin. She's looking good. She's actually making up the stagger on Kylie Williams from Star Academy. So it looks as though it's uh, Eliza Rose Benjamin who is in the lead at the moment. She is running out of lane five. That's her in front of you here now. And on the outside, we have uh, Kadia McQueen from St. Mary's Junior. She goes past her, so she's in the lead with a nice stagger. Well, here comes Alpha Junior now in Leah Campbell. Leah Campbell is eating up some track and eating up some grounds on uh, Elijah Rose Benjamin. But she has her work cut out for her. We have not seen uh, uh, Kaya Swan in this one. But let's see, it's going to be a battle for the finish line here. But it's Westmoreland Junior in Eliza Rose Benjamin. She is fading away, but she has a little lead. Can she take it to the finish line? Here comes the athlete from Alpha on the line. She nips her on the line. Wow. Leah Campbell nips. Elijah Rose Benjamin just on the line, and what a finish that was, Charles. An amazing finish, and uh, just on the line. Uh, uh, I mean, she didn't expect that, um, and I'm sure uh, the audience didn't expect it either, but right on the line. That's totally magnificent, and we want to congratulate uh, the athlete for Well, uh, what a technique she's using here, running from behind. <laughs> As she wins this one, Leah Campbell in one minute, 0 0.756 seconds, 7.56 seconds. And Elijah Rose Benjamin, who was in the lead for most of it, been clipped on the finish line. Kea Swan picking up the third position here. And uh, a tremendous run here by Leah Campbell. Very close indeed. So the fans there from Alpha Junior must be very satisfied with this run here from Leah Campbell. As we get ready for the boys in the 400 meters under 13. Again, want to look out for is Keisha Steven. <laughs> Kashe Steven, I Kashe. beg your pardon. And Kashe already won the 1 and 200 meters. His dad is always beaming here with a big smile across his face. That's Gary, one of our cameramen. So there they are. Sky Murray from Gateway Christian in lane one. Josiah Francis, St. Mary's Junior, lane two. Malashi Campbell, first choice, lane three. Kashe Stephen, first choice, lane four. Jaden Strong, Westmoreland Junior, in five. Job Samuel, Alpha Junior, he's in six. Jared Alexander, also from Alpha Junior, he's in seven. And Christian Thompson of Grenada Junior Academy, he's in lane eight. They're going after a record of one minute, 1 minute, 1.1 seconds, established in 2019 by Quinn Pair. And uh, so far this season, Kashi Steven has returned a time of 1 minute, 5.47 seconds. So some time away from the record, he would have to bring his A game and a tremendous improvement from what he did in the preliminaries to break this record. <coughs> They've been called to their marks one more time by the starters. Murray, Francis, Campbell, Stephen, Strawn, Samuel, Alexander and Thompson. Uh, there they go. Nice clean start to the 400 meters under 13 boys. 
There we see already making a move and making up the stagger is Cache Steven of first choice in the orange. In the middle of your screen here, Cache Steven. He has on his outside an athlete here from Westmoreland Junior, it looks like. Jaden Strawn. Strawn is also a top contender for this event. But from what we saw in the 100 meters and 200 meters, it should be a walk in the park here for Cache Steven. Steven beginning to pick up momentum here now with about 200 meters to go. He has on his outside the athlete from Westmoreland Junior, Jaden Strawn. They turn it on here now with about 110 meters to go. Cache Steven looking over the right shoulder here. And uh, Jaden Strawn is also there. Cache. Steven it is, still up front. They're beginning to tire. Strength and determination is what is going to take them through here. Kashi Steven is going to win this one here by 10 meters or so. In second is Jaden Strawn of Westmoreland Junior. And the race for third is on. It seems, it seems as though it's Jared Alexander of Alpha Junior. We await the official result. But a good run indeed by Kashi Steven one more time. Honestly, Smith, I really feel, felt like if I was in that race, I, I began to feel the burn and feel tired as I was going down that last 50 meters. But I think what happened here, Charles, is that just about the 120 meter mark, when uh, Jaden Strawn was in contention there and he turned it up a little bit, he forced Cache to change gears. That's right. And I think that was against Cache's race plan. And that's why he looked a little bit maybe tired towards the end. But look at the time here. Very consistent with what he did earlier on in the year. 1 minute 5.35 seconds and he came in here with 1 minute 5.47 seconds so a little faster right. but very consistent there about but i think his race plan was changed based on the pressure that was exerted here by Jaden strong just about 120 meters and hopefully he'll get a little more pressure uh and it's so that he can improve his performances here today because uh when we look at the records being set uh there are there is some distance in the time that we need to close the gap for well, J uh, Cache was never pushed like that in his uh, earlier two events. But uh, Young Strong here from Westmoreland Junior really, really pushed him hard here and make him have him to deep, dig deep down into his reserve in this the 400 meters. The 400 meters may be not the easiest events for these youngsters under 13. It's almost like a middle distance for them. But yet still, they were able to finish very strong. And whenever you hear about the 400 meters, you probably always automatically mind switch to Kirani James. Uh, of course, we know that's his race. So Kirani, maybe the first name that comes to mind, but there are several others that would also come to mind when we hear the 400 meters. Alin Francique. Definitely. Um, Bartholomew. Charles from SAS previously. And several others um, that have um, gone before us. In this, in this event. It's an event that Grenada has really made a, a name for itself internationally, the 400 meters. Even in the female category as well, the Hazeland Rages, Kasaya George, and others who would have um, excelled at the 400 meters as well. So the girls' 400 meter dash on the 15 is the next event on the track. And uh, we expect another exciting event. And to let you viewers know that um, later on in the course of the broadcast, we're going to have with us the Chief Executive Officer of George F. Huggins, Mrs. Anya Chow Chong, to join us here in the commentary position and to speak to us with reference to George F. Huggins' contribution to these games over the years. And we are about to witness event number 53, the girls' 400-meter dash under 15. In the lineup, we have... Akaya Alexander of Westmoreland Junior School, Gabriella King, Lane 2, Grenada Junior Academy, Alexa Lawrence, Alpha Junior School, Lane 4, we have Mackenzie, I hope I got that right, Carasquel, uh, that's from Alpha Junior. We have Eva Dorrell in Lane 5 from Westmoreland Junior School, Nala Peters, St. Mary's Junior, Kylie George, St. Mary's Junior, and Jadia, Jadia Langain, Grenada Junior Academy. Well, we see for the first time here from the Alpha Junior, Mackenzie Carasquel. Um, we did not see her in the 100, not 200, but she is in with the best time in the 400 here for the under 15 girls category. So let's see how she matches up against uh, Alexa Lawrence and also from Westmoreland Junior, 
Eva Dorrell. These are some of the major contenders in, in this event. But they are on the starters orders and we will see the start of the 400 meters under 15 girls. And they're off. A nice clean start. Here it is. Let's see who makes up the early stagger. On this one, it looks like Westmoreland Jr. and Eva Dorrell out there in lane 5. That's Dorrell in lane 5 making up the stagger on St. Mary's Jr. Nyla Peters and uh, Kaylee George. But you would have to be mindful of Alpha Jr. in Mackenzie Coruscant in lane 4. She looks very comfortable there. That's uh, Mackenzie. But up front, it looks as though it is from... Uh, that's uh, Nyla Peters from St. Mary's Jr. looking good. As she turns it up a little bit here now, all day in lane five. But still, Kara Squirrel is some way behind. She picks up the pace now. That's Kara Squirrel for Alpha Jr. in the brightly colored orange sp pink spikes here. She's coming around the bend nicely. Westmoreland Jr. is still there with uh, Eva Dorrell. They're beginning to tire a bit here. Now, who has the strength to push through the finish line? They're down the home street here now. It is still West Moreland Jr. Eva Dorrell. Eva Dorrell. Is she going to hold her own here? She looks comfortable. The others are tiring. Dorrell is looking good indeed for West Moreland Jr. With 20 meters to go. Dorrell is going to be Dorrell for the victory in second. It looks as though it's Kara Squirrel from Alpha Jr. And a good strong run by Dorrell from start to finish. The under 15 girls, 400 meters. Indeed, Eva Dorrell, 1 minute 17.42 seconds. And Kara Squirrel, Mackenzie Kara Squirrel of Alpha Junior, picking up the, the silver medal. St. Mary's Junior, Nyla Peters in third. And uh, the girls are very tired now. They've given up their best year. It's a very grueling event for them. And it's good to see them finishing strong and finishing on their feet. I'm seeing uh, on the starting that the starters sometimes have to call to the audience to have them keep quiet. Uh, is that often a problem? So sometimes, especially when the stadium is very noisy, it can affect uh, the athlete's ability to hear the starters call, especially when no microphones are being used by the starters. And so that's why you will see the starters asking the spectators to remain quiet so at least the the athletes can hear the call of the starter so we're gonna have now the 400 meter dash for the under 15 boys and following that we're gonna have the next medal ceremony and we'll have a chance also to speak to the ceo of georgia foggins who's already here with us in the commentary position to give a perspective of georgia foggins and the involvement with these games over the years the lineup for event number 54 the boys 400 meter dash under 15 we have Kyle Daniel of First Choice in lane one. Lane two, Nathaniel Jeremiah of Gateway Christian Academy. Lane three, Tyrese Braveboy, Alpha Junior School. Lane four, Giovanni Green, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane five, Deshaun Ledlow, Star Academy. Lane six, Shamari Wildman, Alpha Junior School. Lane seven, Gary Noel, St. Mary's Junior School. And lane eight, Nathaniel Cobb, Grenada Junior Academy. Well, the youngster Giovanni Green from St. Mary's Jr. obviously want to look out for here. He was featured in the 100 and 200 meters and he's the only athlete that have returned a time of under one minute in this event. So we expect him to do well here as well. Uh, Deshaun Ledlow, he was the athlete that won the 800 meters. So we expect him to offer some good competition to Giovanni Green. And these athletes again are the two athletes that we would want to um, look out for in this event as maybe two of the top contenders. But we cannot rule out uh, the Tyrese Brave Boy from Alpha Junior. He's always been there with them in the one, two, three positions. And uh, we never know, we may have a surprise in the event as well. And the time of 58 point, sorry, 58, 58 seconds point, 58 point eight five seconds comes from Giovanni Green and he is going to run against him his own time. So he already race. broke the record in the preliminaries. Right. And he's running against himself, so to speak, here now to see if he can break his own record that he established earlier on in the season. The competitors, Daniel, Jeremiah, Brave Boy, Green, Ledlow, Wildman, Noel and Cobb. The 400 meter dash under 15 boys.
So we see the athlete in two already in the set position. I'm sure they're having some difficulties on the hearing. It seems to be a false start. And I think those various passes that we saw earlier on maybe is making so much noise down there that the athletes can't hear the officials' command as audible as they would like to. So it's dear. a very noisy atmosphere here at the Kiryani James Athletic Stadium. A very good turnout as well, Charles. A lot of support for the youngsters. And the sort of encouragement and motivation that these spectators bring, the, the, the track moms and track dads, so to speak, is tremendous. So the boys are regrouping, getting themselves back in order, and getting ready to start the race once more. And we have a yellow flag up. That simply means that they're not ready to start yet. When you see the white flag go up, that is when they will be ready to run the race. And it's not easy when the athletes are kept out there on the track for extended periods because on the, even on the international circuit, the athletes program themselves in such a manner. So once they know what is their race time, they go through their paces in such a manner that prepares them at the optimum level for the race time. I'm not sure we are that scientific in these games here, but it's always not an easy thing when we have the athletes being kept out there for so long and especially when there is a false start and they have these thousands of people beaming at them on the track. Um, it can take some nerve as well and, and, and create some anxious moments for them on the track. That is correct because the race is not only won because of your physical condition, but it also has to do with your mental condition as well. And that plays a very important role so when you're running a race like this. The official they having a word with uh, Tiris Brave Boy or they in three. I'm not sure, we're not sure what the issue is. But um, some conversation is happening there between one of the starters and the Brave Boy in lane three. So they're going to have a restart to this one. The white flag goes up now, so all systems are ready. They're back onto their marks. The 400 meters under 15 boys. The time to beat here, 58.85 seconds. Giovanni Green of St. Mary's Junior School. Uh, they're up and running now. It's a nice clean start here. There is Giovanni Green there in the middle of the screen here from St. Mary's Junior. On the other side is Deshaun Ledlow in the turquoise outfit from the Star Academy. Giovanni Green already won the 100 and 200 meters. Has some challenge here from Ledlow. They go stride for stride down the back straight. Who is going to make the early kick? Who is going to kick first? 200 meters to go. It is still Giovanni Green and Ledlow with some distance ahead of the rest of the field here. I think they're measuring each other here. When is Green going to make the kick? Green begins to pick up the pace here now. He moves away from Ledlow. Giovanni Green it is with 110 meters to go. Giovanni Green is pumping hard. He's, going, he's moving away from Ledlow. Ledlow still has some in the tank. He's coming back. Ledlow is not giving up just like that. But it's maybe too late for him. Giovanni Green is maintaining his form. He's going to push through to the finish line. He wins this one. Ledlow takes up the silver medal. And again, consistency here by Giovanni Green. I am sure from the time, from the looks of it, he may just go under 58.85. Time will tell. We wait the official results. But Giovanni Green, another very impressive run. And uh, they were pushing each other up to that particular point. Uh, we have the official Well, times. a much slower time. It's 1 minute, 0 0.78 seconds for Giovanni Green. And Ledlow in second with 1 minute, 2.12 seconds. Therese Brave Boy in third from Alpha Junior. But again, a good run indeed by Giovanni Green. That's three gold medals on the day. We saw also three silver medals for Ledlow and one gold medal. And uh, these two athletes continue to dominate this category in the under-15 boys. The beautiful thing about it is that uh, it's not only the first, second and third positions that will be gaining points. We have other positions gaining points as well. So that would help to close that gap. So even if uh, a school might be placing in the first three and they have other contenders, they're going to be gaining some traction there as well. And that's correct. So... We're going to have a medal presentation ceremony and while that is happening, we'll have an opportunity to speak with our distinguished guests here in the commentary position, the Chief Executive Officer of George F. Huggins & Company, our title sponsors, 
Mrs. Anya Chow Chong, and uh, we're happy to have her in, in what we call our studio, so to speak. And so you'd hear from her giving a perspective on Georgia Foggins and the involvement in these games over the years. So we say good afternoon to Mrs. Chow Chong and welcome to TNR Communications. Welcome to George F. Huggins uh, Private Primary School Sports 2023. And so far, I can tell you that there was a prompt start. Yes. The events are flowing smoothly and on time. Even the intermission was within the time allocated yes. because we've been monitoring that here. So your organizers and uh, the people who are manning the games today have been doing a tremendously good job. So I say good evening to you and welcome. Good evening. Thanks for having me here. Nice to be a part of such a fantastic event. Um, very proud. As you rightly said, everything is going so smoothly. Um, on time, um, well organized. So kudos to all those who have played a part in making sure that this game, uh, this championship is a success it has been so far. So George of Hoggins have been involved in these games for several years. Yes. We knew of the Ribena game, so to speak, back yes. then. Yes. And of course, Ribena is one of the products that you, you are the agents for. Yes. But tell us, what does that mean, first of all, for George of Hoggins to be part of this event? And what does it also mean for the athletes and the schools who are participating? Sure. The impact it has had on, on both the company and on the schools. Sure. Well, you know, Hoggins has always traditionally um, been very focused on three main pillars in terms of our corporate social responsibility and sports has always been the largest of the three pillars um, I mean our involvement in sport goes back for those of you who have long memories or may have perhaps a few more years than me in terms of <laughs> the age clock you know would remember the days of Huggins netball um, we were always very active in the Texaco games um, you remember Texaco games use uh, Texaco is the predecessor to Rubis um, and we, we distribute for Rubis so we have always had a very close close um, um, relationship uh, with the sporting arena and so being a part of the private primary school sports has been nothing short of a privilege for us for the past 15 years um, as you rightly said, Lester, we started off our early sponsorship days. Um, it became known as the, the Ribena Sports, you know. And Ribena is a product um, which is um, manufactured and we distribute for our principal, um, Suntory International. Same family as Lucosane and other drinks that we, you know, promote as a company. Um, following that, and, and you find that uh, principals tend to invest in one area. And once the event has reached maturity, they then um, move their funding in market. And so uh, we were very happy that SM Jalil um, picked up the games um, a few years ago. And so it became known as the Cool Kids, Fruits are Cool Kids, um, um, private primary school sports, you know. Um, they too um, um, have shifted their marketing um, in market fund. And so um, <laughs> Mrs. Patrick came to me and said, well, Mrs. Chow Chung, you know, SM Jalil is moving out. Um, do we stay with the games? And I think that was probably one of the easiest decisions I made in recent times. It took us, I think, about three or four seconds, <laughs> um, as I said to Mr. Elcock, you know, and I said, absolutely, Huggins will take the title sponsorship this year. So um, it's testimony to our commitment. Um, as a company, it gives us satisfaction that we s we've seen to answer your question over the years, the development of these athletes. You look at athletes like Connor Marie and Dominic and you see where they've come from and where they've, they've, what they've achieved, you know, um, as their athletic career, you know, starts to mature. So we've really had a gift over the years to see these young boys and girls um, grow from strength to strength. And you see these sort of rivalries develop in the races and you get to know the young people involved, you know? So it really, really, it's a gift. It's and a if gift. We, if we move it away from Huggins and the athletes now, yeah. and look at the spectators, yeah. the moms, the dads, we were commenting on that earlier on, mm -hmm. the support for these kids. Yep. And I'm sure you're proud too to see what these games have been doing for m the bonding That's right. between uh, these parents and, and, mm -hmm. and the guardians and the kids as mm -hmm. well. It is, you know, I, I when I delivered the opening address this morning, I am um, sorry, earlier this afternoon, I looked into the stands and I recognized faces from several of the primary schools who I know 
and have wonderful friendships with, you know. And somebody said to me in the stands just now that they find that this particular championship, um, you find tremendous support coming in from the parents involved, you know. So you see, whereas I think the parents at the school level, they are rivals from house to house and blue and green and yellow. And then they all come together on behalf of the school, right? In these, in, at this event. So it really is nice to see the camaraderie, to see them cheering their kids on, to see other parents cheering other parents' children on, you know, as a unit. It's heartwarming, it's heartwarming. Exactly so. And then, uh, George F. Huggins, you've been here maybe for over 10 years with these games? 15. 15? 15, yeah. Mm -hmm. what, do we, what do we look for in the future? Commitment, commitment. Um, I think that this, out of this championship, you see so many of our young athletes develop and go on further, um, be it to nationals, be it to um, you know, regionals, Carifta, et cetera, et cetera. What I do hope to see is the private primary schools taking up that lane eight in the national championships. Um, I really feel that we are missing an opportunity there um, because, I mean, you've seen a talent on the field today. So my next question was actually related to that. There is this contentious issue now yeah. as to the involvement of the private primary schools in the national primary school championship that is being organized by the Grenada Union of Teachers. Yeah. And they have the argument for wanting to keep the private primary schools out. The private primary schools association has their argument yes. to justify their inclusion. Yes. What can be done, do you think, at this stage um, to bridge that gap and to have sure. that that seamless transition to allow for those athletes. And I'm saying that because if, um, when we look at the secondary school level, especially at Presentation Brothers College, mm -hmm. a lot of the athletes who are doing well there and winning gold medals at Intercol would have come from the private primary yes, schools. Yes, yes, I know of a but few But they myself. have been robbed of an opportunity, for example, to represent Grenada, the Caribbean Union of Teachers Games, the CET right. Games, right. and other events because of the non-affiliation of these private primary schools to the GUT. How can we really fix that situation? I think a lot of dialogue is needed, and I'm speaking here in my personal capacity now, not on behalf of the company, but um, it is something that needs to be seriously considered. Because when we speak of a national event, I don't think that any children should be excluded from the event. So I think that the private school students ought to have the same opportunity to compete um, at a national, on a national level. Um, so that's my personal view. I'm happy to be a part of any dialogue um, that may be entertained going forward. Um, of course, I would love to understand what the, the challenges are in, um, um, for the GUT in excluding the private um, primary schools. But dialogue is key. Communication is key on this. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, those of us who really love track and field would love to see that lane 8 being taken up by sure. um, the private primary schools. Likewise. Um, the events are going to continue. We are going yep. to continue the conversation as well. Sure. Um, maybe we can look out. No, we can look towards some of the performances we've seen today. You mentioned the likes of Conor Marie, yes, Monroe, yes. and mm -hmm. and Dominic, but we saw moments ago a good run by um, Giovanni Green oh, from St. Mary's. So impressive, young man. And he, so he's impressive. doing well. Um, yep. Jehu from St. Mary's also is from Grenada Junior Academy. Academy. He's also doing well. Yep. But interestingly, I recall several years ago. Grenada Junior Academy used to win this sports That's right. hands down. That's right. Elcock and his team. They were the early and winners. And for the last seven years, we saw St. Mary's Junior Correct. dominating this game. Well, not Correct. dominating, but winning. Last year was pretty close. Yeah. And this year, they came with half a point separating them. Mm -hmm. And they're within 10 points mm -hmm. of each other mm -hmm. throughout the games. That level of competition and, and, Very and, and the friendly rivalry yeah. as well that is yeah. here speaks a lot for the games. Absolutely. So the event in progress, as we're going to continue the conversation, is the... That looks as like the Georgia Foggins race, is it? Is that your staff race? That's it looks my as staff. Your staff race. That's my staff. My son is supposed to be somewhere in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying my best to contain myself. Um, I go. have my main I office team on the track. <laughs> We have the shipping bullets and we have some uh, some gunners on this on the um on the on the track as well good it's your call mrs chow chung who's there up front now i'm what trying to recognize that? that looks like that looks like the supermarket division mrs patrick we wow, can't tell we can't tell in the lead, it seems. we can't tell no no that looks like the petroleum division and that's that my looks like no that's audit that's my son i think in audit, that's your son, in audit? is that kyle that's no, brian that's in front that's brian, yeah. That's Brian, Petroleum Division in front. So that's Petroleum Division here. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I said to Mrs. Patrick, I said to Mrs. Patrick earlier, 
And here comes the first lady anchoring and the shipping team. <laughs> That is wonderful, wonderful. I said to Mrs. Patrick earlier, I said, um, f I'm not sure if you know this, Lester, but um, Huggins Sports, out of Huggins Sports, came the Intersector Sports. Eh? Huggins, um, back in the days of the 90s, we would have a major sports meet, interdepartmental, um, interdepartmental competition. Oh, wonderful, look at the guys, look at the guys celebrating. <laughs> Excellent job. The Petroleum Division, I believe they are defending champions. So they've done it again. They have done it again. You see, when you're cooking with gas, the <laughs> gas, gas has you cooking. Gas. Yes, good gas, good gas, ruby gas. <laughs> indeed, That's indeed. excellent. So I congratulate Mr. Hillier, departmental, um, the general manager. Congrats to you and, of course, to the relay team put forward by the Petroleum Division. It's good. It's good to see the involvement of the staff in that as yes, well. And yes. um, it's, uh, I guess it's a much look forward to event from the other staff members. That's definitely. Who are either definitely. here or who are looking at the broadcast. Maybe we'll see Najuma next day on the track. You know? I think, yes, we're going we're gonna to form our own team. Yes. You know? I said the CEO's <laughs> office, we, we plan to form a team, you know. Um, but we're going to do a different style of race. We, the ladies are going to do a relay in high heels and we're going to wow. see who's going to come over the finish line first. I don't think that Folks the... Folks, um, you're hearing that now <laughs> from the CEO. <CEO's> <laughs> we'll run on the grass for the National Stadium authorities. We'll run on the grass. We wouldn't destroy our track. <laughs> but no, for certain, I think that um, I was mentioning about the, the genesis of the Intersector Games, you know, and um, Mrs. Patrick and I had a chat earlier and I think it's time that Huggins returns to the track. We have some fantastic athletes in-house who ran at the secondary school level, at the intercall level, and I think it's time we bring it back. You know, sports is so important in terms of building camaraderie, building that indeed, team indeed. spirit, and it should not be limited to just your school life. And I the health benefits there. Health benefits, you know. There also. Yeah. It should follow you on into your, into your professional career. So we speak track and field here today with Georgia Foggins in, in the sporting arena. Um, what else? I know you were in the finals of the intersector football as well. Absolutely. If you football, placed second. That's to, right. To, that's to right. Company. Um, to um, our colleagues yes. from across the Caranage. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, we are very much involved in intersector cricket. Um, we have a very strong um, cricket team, uh, football, as you said. Um, we also have a strong netball team. You know, and our netball team is mixed. We have uh, two gentlemen who play on the team with the ladies. So um, we are very, very much, um, very, mu very much involved and active, you know. And some of us do other sports as well. <laughs> so I know you're involved with your uh, karate, is it? That's right, that's, that's right. But before you, before mm -hmm. you go, I just want to say a happy belated International Women's Day to you. And Thank you're very you. prominent in this area as a, a female CEO and having to undergo all the challenges that um, you would encounter from the male counterparts and others yeah. and, and, and so on. But how is that for you as a female CEO in a, in a, a big company in the landscape of Canada? Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I've, I've answered that question a few times, you know, and um, the challenges I've had have come mainly from the outside. Um, but I, I always spare no, no effort in recognizing the male counterparts I have at Huggins. Um, I am... The woman I am, largely as a result of their coaching, their mentorship, um, these gentlemen lifted me up and helped me to build my confidence, my knowledge, my strength. And so I always believe that um, men have just as responsible a role as we all do in building up our nation's women, you know. So um, I can safely say that in-house I have a wonderful, wonderful um, um, male um, team and I know they do their best for the most part they do their best to lift us women up and uh, as I said the challenges have been from the outside and you know I always say m the most challenges I've, I've, I've um, faced have come from other women not necessarily <laughs> men you know interesting. yeah well, very interesting so I think one of the important lessons and, and, and messages we ought to send on International Women's Day is that women need to lift other women up as well yeah very well said. I know you have a lot of strong women around you as well, Mrs. Francis and Absolutely. others. Absolutely. And again, I want to compliment them and the rest of the organizing team for yeah. putting together a very, very good event today. Yes. It's not many times I've been covering track and field for several years. And I can tell you not many times I've seen it start on time yeah. and the events run off on time. Even the intermission, we know, for example, the intermission has been lagged and yeah. long and drawn out. 
but it finished within the time allocated and I think that's a tremendous accomplishment, tremendous accomplishment. for the organizing team. Yep. I join you, Lester, in saying thanks to um, the organizers of this event. Um, I just especially want to give my very best to Mr. Elcock and his team. Um, he is always front and center um, and the success of today's event. I'm so impressed by today's event and that is, you know, major kudos to him and it would be so remiss of me not to say a big thank you to Mrs. Najuma Francis Patrick, our corporate marketing manager, who has led the Huggins team on the sponsorship side of this. She's done a tremendous job and I am very proud to sit here today as the CEO um, on behalf of Huggins. So one last thing before you run off, I'm going to sure. put you on the spot. <laughs> we have 10 teams competing here today. Obviously <laughs> you came in here, maybe not with a favorite, but with the hope that yeah. one of these schools would win. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, full disclosure, um, <laughs> my daughter actually made it onto the um, Westmoreland Junior team in the long jump. So she did just the field events, you know. Um, but I have children that I love and you'll see me outside and I'm screaming for all the schools because they are little kids that I love so much in all the other schools you know so I have no favorites I mean obviously you know um, I am thrilled to see the neck and neck competition at the top you know you always like to see that happen so it's never a fair accompli when you sit here that you'll have a returning champion you know so I love that but I really I really have no favorites today Thank I you. really thank have you no so favorites. It's today. been a pleasure chatting with pleasure you, Mrs. Chow Chow. Thank you. And we want to say a special thank you to Georgia Foggins and your team and for the support for the last 15 years. And we look forward for your continued support to these youngsters yes. in the future. Thank, thank you. Thank you again. very much. It's a pleasure. And uh, the pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Take good care. So, viewers, you've been chatting here with Mrs. Anya Chow Chong, the Chief Executive Officer of our title sponsors, Georgia Foggins and Company Limited. And she was accompanied by Ms. Najuma Francis, Mrs. Najuma Francis, uh, Patrick, the marketing coordinator of Georgia Foggins. So what's happening now is the medal presentation. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over to the stadium microphone for the medal presentation. And we, we would resume when the track and field action continues on the track. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. And winning this event in a time of 1 minute 17.42 seconds from a small and junior school, Eva Doro. <laughs> event number 54, the boys 400 meter dash, under 15 division. In third position, in a time of one minute, 7.09 seconds, from Alpha Junior School, Tyrese Brave Boy. In second position, in a time of one minute, 2.12 seconds, from Star Academy, Tyson Ledlow. And winning this event in one minute, from St. Mary's Junior School, Giovanni Green. Next up, our Huggins Relay. In third position, Huggins Main Office. In second position, Huggins Foodland Division. And winning this event, Huggins Petroleum, our distributors of Ruby Gas. A special thank you to Mr. Ryan Joseph, Director of Joseph Consulting Agency, for assisting us with these medals. And congratulations to all of our medalists. We head back to the track for really action. Thank you, Russell. Thank you to Mr. Joseph and the medal presentation party. Congratulations to all of the athletes who would have received medals.
in that ceremony. We're getting set for the relays, folks. It's the final segment of today's proceedings, the Huggins Private Primary School Games 2023. Ten more events to go. Ten relays to go. Just inform me the points for the relays. First position gets you 16 points. Second position gets you 10 points. Third position gets you 8 points. Fourth position gets you 6 points. Fifth, five. Sixth, four points. Seventh, three points. And eighth, two points. Before we begin, I want to give you the updated point standings, folks. Just so that we clear, those, just so that you're aware. Mr. DJ, please indulge me. Point standings. We welcome you back to the live track and field action here at the Kiriani James Athletic Stadium. It's the George F. Hogan's Private Primary School's Track and Field Championship 2023. We're down to the relay events and again I welcome back Mr. Charles who is accompanying me, Leslie Smith here with the live commentary. And we have the commentary being brought to you by TNR Communication. We're down to the relay events and before we go into the commentary of the relay events, we want to give you the points update. And so Mr. Charles will now give you the points of this. Interesting as, as what is happening. And Mr. Charles will relay that information to you now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. And we have in the 10th position so far, uh, the A Plus Institute Junior Academy with one point. Ninth position, Gateway Christian Academy, 50 points. Eighth position, Star Academy, 99 points. Seventh position, Beacon Junior School, 103.5 points. Sixth position, Grace Lutheran School, 118 points. Fifth position, Westmoreland Junior School, and they have 284.5 points. Fourth position, Alpha Junior School, 305.5 points. First Choice Junior is in third position, with 365 and ladies and gentlemen we have a switch here we have now in second position grenada junior academy with 424 points and out in front we have saint mary's junior school with a total of 457 Point five points and they are coming away from that 0.5 lead that we saw before and then they went up to 2.5 and eventually they are uh, significantly in front um, and sorry they are they are, sorry Grenada Junior Academy was with that 0.5 lead and now um, we see St. Mary's Junior School significantly in front and we want to see what would happen but I'm still excited and I know that definitely uh, the, the game is not over yet it's still anybody's game um, and the relays are about to start they are too a determinant factor here and the excitement is just building and we know for sure that we're going to have a champion but we're curious as to find out who it will be well interestingly here the relay events are going to determine the overall winners st mary's goes into the relay events with 33 and a half points ahead of uh, grenada junior academy st mary's being the seventh time winner seven consecutive years and looking to make it eight in 2023 but Grenada Junior Academy with the likes of uh, uh, Swan and and others would like to put a stop to that so let's see what happens the first relay on the track would be the girls four by 100 meter relay on the nine category and we have Gateway in one Birian in two St. Mary's in three Westmoreland in four First choice in five, Alpha in six, Grenada Junior Academy in seven, and Grace Lutheran in eight. For those of you keeping scores, Trying to update you on the points allocation for these team events. So as we have it available, we'll share it with you. But it's the relay events. The exciting relay is about to begin. We have the 4x1 under 9, boys and girls, and the under 13s. We also have the under 11s. 
the under 15 and then we have the 800 sprint relay which is a two by one by one by four open for both boys and girls so there's no four by 400 meters but a sprint medley relay so there they are on the starters orders the four by 100 meter relay for under nine girls Gateway, Berian, St. Mary's, Westmoreland Junior, First Choice, Alpha, Grenada Junior Academy, and out there in lane 8 is Grace Lutheran School. So it can be anybody's games in 2023. The real battle here is between the Grenada Junior Academy who has won these games for several years before the St. Mary's Junior took the ascendancy. And these two schools are battling for championship honors in 2023. This time it's a clean start in the 4x100 meters on the nine girls. Let's see who make, we want to make up the early stagger here. Looking good is Alpha, but so too is Westmoreland Junior out there in lane four. Westmoreland Junior in the lead at the moment, the first handover. Westmoreland Junior hands over first. In the lead is Westmoreland Junior. And they have uh, first choice on their shoulders to the right. Alpha is also looking good in the white and green up front. Second and over about to take place now. Let's see who hands over first. It's still Westmoreland. Alpha Junior is there. A good run here by the athlete in the blue and white. That looks like uh, St. Mary's on the inside. Indeed, it's St. Mary's on the inside in lane three. St. Mary is coming from nowhere and in the lead now on the inside. Alpha is there. First choice there. St. Mary's hands over now. Nice clean hand over by St. Mary's. In the under 9, 4 by 100 meters. There they go. They're battling. What a run back here by Westmoreland Junior. Westmoreland Junior in the lead now. A good run. A strong lead by the anchor girl here for Westmoreland Junior. And we also have Alpha Junior out there on the outside looking for second position. But Westmoreland wins it. Alpha second. And it looks as though it's first choice in third. West St. Mary's in fourth. A good change in the lead here in, in, in this race. Um, Westmoreland started off well. They had maybe a bad second and third leg, but the anchor girl for Westmoreland really turned it on and win this one for them. I love the dynamics of each leg. Each leg had a bit of excitement in them. And in particular, when you look at the batter passing uh, for some of the uh, teams, it was very, very smooth and it propelled the team forward. Because once you have that fumble at that line, then you know you're going to lose some time, you're going to lose some traction, and of course you're giving the uh, opponents an opportunity to pass. But I look back at the battle handover between the St. Mary's Junior on that final leg, as smooth as butter, you would say. And uh, it was only because of a very, very strong run by the anchor girl here for Westmoreland Junior. They were able to win this one comfortably in the end. And uh, picking up the second position was Alpha Junior and first choice picking up the third. St. Mary's in the end picking up the fourth position. And this was the event number 50, 55, the girls 100, 4 by 100 meter under 9. And it is, it was an exciting race and I'm excited to see what next will come. We have up next event number 56, the boys 4 by 100 meter relay under 9. In lane one, Star Academy. Lane two, Gateway Christian Academy. Lane three, First Choice. Lane four, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane five, St. Mary's Junior Sc School. Lane six, Westmoreland Junior School. Lane seven, Alpha Junior School. And lane eight, the Beacon Junior School. Uh, we have a time uh, taken in 2017, the record time, 2017, one minute and four point one six seconds uh they didn't have what school uh holds the record at this time uh probably we could pull that up a little later on but we'll see who will be the champions in this round uh we see uh grenada junior academy coming in with a good seed time of one minute eight point two four seconds and they could be very good contenders for this race. But of course, uh, the dynamics of the stadium, uh, the adrenaline, the drive to win could very much shift uh, anyone into first gear uh, and hitting it off nicely as they go along. Well, St. Mary's Junior are the current record holders for this event. 
and uh, they one of the favorites here. Grenada Junior Academy is also a top contender. So again, the relay events are going to have a bearing on the final outcome. It's going to go down to the very last event in my estimation. This particular race here, the two top teams based on the times that they've returned is First Choice and the Grenada Junior Academy. And either of them would want to gain the ascendancy just to either establish a further lead or to narrow the gap. In the case of St. Mary's, they would want to extend the lead. In the case of Grenada Junior Academy, they would want to close that 33-point gap that was there before the start of the relay events. So in, in either way you look at it, Grenada Junior Academy would always want to be ahead of St. Mary's in any event. If they're not winning, at least to come ahead of them. And St. Mary's could afford to lose a race or two, but they would have to be there in maybe top three in the others. And, and, and if, they are, if, they, if, if forever they come ahead of Grenada Junior Academy, then they would extend the lead that they had before the relay events. Uh, but is it too late for first choice, though? Uh, we see them here with 365 points out of event number 54. Uh, could they close up that gap? Could they at least uh, take second? Well, we're going to come back to that. The 4 100 meter boys, sorry, yeah, boys on the 9 is in progress. And looking good already is uh, St. Mary's Jr. and also Westmoreland, it looks like. Uh, the first handover is made here. And it looks as though it's Grenada Junior Academy out there in lane three. Or lane four, Grenada Junior Academy, but a uh, strong challenge from St. Mary's on the outside. St. Mary's in five, Grenada Junior Academy in four. There they go. Grenada Junior Academy, St. Mary's. Grenada Junior Academy has a slight lead over St. Mary's. What a race it is. They're battling for championship honors. Final and over. It is Grenada Junior Academy. Grenada Junior Academy on the inside. That's Jehu. Jehu. He was the winner of the 100, sorry, the 80 meters and the 150. Jehu is going to win this one for Grenada Junior Academy. St. Mary's would have to settle for second. And again, the gap here maybe would be the gap between the two, the two schools is narrowed as J. W. Gordon anchors his school to a victory in the 4x100 meters on the nine boys. Again, a very interesting and exciting race. Uh, loving the anchors and I think the uh, coaches would have strategically placed the athletes according to their performances uh, because, of course, you can see uh, they would have wanted to place uh, the anchors in a strategic position so that they could gain or close gaps when, when necessary. And of course the excitement is um, in the stands. You have the green section waving, we have the blue section, we have a number of them just celebrating and enjoying themselves. The stadium is uh, filling up nicely and it's just what, after Minister 6 at this point in time. And uh, we have a great audience here participating, totally enjoying themselves right here at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. Well, I can tell you, even if Green is not winning, they're jumping in the stands. As we saw moments ago, it was a battle for the blue schools as Grenada Junior Academy and St. Mary's Junior. And these two schools are relatively close to each other based on their location. And that's in the Tempe area. And here they are at the National Stadium really battling for championship honors. I wonder if it has something to do with that valley breeze down there. <laughs> oh, it's all fun here at the Kirani James Atlantic Stadium. You are witnessing, if you are not familiar with what you're witnessing at this time, you're witnessing the Huggins Primary School Games 2023. And we are here, Mr. Smith and myself, uh, giving you live commentary from inside the National Stadium. Just want to say a special good afternoon to all of you who are viewing the live broadcast on social media on the TNR Communications YouTube page, the GIS YouTube page, uh, Party Grenada YouTube page as well, and uh, I think the Facebook page of George F. Huggins and uh, TNR Communications as well. Say a special good afternoon to Kizzy and the rest of you guys there who are screaming at the top of your voices for your family and friends who are competing 
There's lots of room down here for you at the National Stadium. Those of you who can still make it, the relay events are always the exciting events. And these athletes are giving off the best here. The next relay event is the 4x100 meters on the 13 girls. They're already on the track. And we will see Westmoreland Jr. in lane one, Grenada Jr. in two, First Choice in three, Alpha in four, Grace Lutheran in five, Birian Beacon. Beacon, I beg your pardon. Beacon in six, Star Academy in seven, and St. Mary's Jr. in lane eight. And of course, you want to have those white flags in on every leg to indicate that the race is about to start. 4 by 100 meters under 13. Interestingly, the two schools that are contending for championship honors, that's St. Mary's Junior and uh, Grenada Junior Academy. St. Mary's Junior is in lane 8, St. Uh, Grenada Junior Academy is in lane 2. So that gives an indication that they're not the two top teams in this particular event. Right. But they would want to come ahead of each other because points are allocated for all of the positions just to ensure that one either narrows the gap or the other extends the lead. There they go. The start of the 4 by 100 meters on the 13 girls. Looking good is uh, Grace Lutheran out there in the purple. Making up the stagger nicely on... Uh, Beacon Junior in the red. Grace Lutheran is looking good. But look at Alpha go in the middle of the screen here now. Alpha in the white and green. Alpha is looking good out there in lane four. The second and over. Alpha makes it first. Alpha comes out the lead. But out there in lane eight, St. Mary's Junior is giving good, good competition as well. St. Mary's Junior, but Alpha in lane four on the inside. Be Beacon is making a run for it. So too is Grace Lutheran. Last hand over here. Alpha comes out first as usual. Alpha Junior is going to be tough to catch Alpha Junior. But on the inside, Grenada Junior Academy is making a run for it in lane two. They're going to come ahead of St. Mary's who's out there in lane eight. Alpha Junior wins it. Grenada Junior Academy second. St. Mary's Junior in third. And what a race indeed. But Alpha Junior who came in with the best time, living up to expectation. And while we were saying that uh, Grenada Junior Academy and St. Mary's not having the best times based on the lane placements, they already lifted their game in this race. And there we have the official results. Alpha Junior School, first place with 58.68 seconds. Grenada Junior Academy, second, 59.39 seconds. And St. Mary's Junior School in third, one minute, 0 0.41 seconds. The excitement continues to heat up on the track. The exciting relays. The fans are having their, fa their fair share of it as well. Uh, they're out here in their numbers, in their hundreds. The moms, the dads, the grandparents, the godparents, the uncles, the aunties. They're all here to support and to cheer these youngsters on. And as we were saying uh, earlier offline, uh, many of these students who come to these sports and participate uh, they end up in secondary schools and they are the ones who contend at the intercall games and the other uh, national games that we have and so we want to make sure that we support them at this beginning sometimes you know we ignore the fact that the small beginnings are very important because without that beginning there will be no end Exactly so, as we see it now, the spectacle here at the National Stadium, the kaleidoscope of colors, the greens, the yellows, the reds, the blues, the oranges, you know, every school has their fan section here. Uh, they're on the lower deck, they're on the upper deck, they're all over and they're very vociferous indeed. Uh, they're very loud. It's a lot of noise down here at the National Stadium as they are here in the hundreds to support the students of the private primary schools. We're about to witness event number 58, the boys 4 by 100 meter relay under 13. We have in lane 1, Grace Lutheran. Lane 2, Gateway Christian Academy. Lane 3, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane 4, First Choice. Lane 5, Alpha Junior School. Lane 6, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane 7, Westmoreland Junior School. Lane 8, the B 
Beacon Junior School. Uh, well, it's going to be another cracker, another exciting one. Again, we look to see what happens between Grenada Junior Academy in lane 3 and uh, St. Mary's Junior in lane 6. But uh, don't rule Alpha Junior out. This, they have Cache Stevens. He's going to be anchoring for Alpha Junior. When we look for at first, first choice, choice, I beg your pardon, in lane 4. So don't rule first choice out. Uh, they're here with the best time as well. And the Cache Steven, I, I'm thinking that Cache is telling himself, if anybody gets it ahead of him, he's going to catch them. And if he gets it ahead of anybody, there is no stopping him. There is no looking back. So let's see what happens. Let's see if he has a strong team with him. But it'll be good to see somebody getting it before Cache and he having to run back here on this 400, 4 by 100 meter relay in the under 13 boys. Well, we do admit we want to see him under some pressure. And so we want to see that he's pushed to his limits uh, to do well. So let's see if the competition can come from Grenada Junior Academy, from Alpha, from St. Mary's, from Westmoreland, from Beacon, from Gateway, and from Grace Lutheran. There they are. They're up and running a nice clean start to the 4x100 meters on the 13 boys. Who's looking good already is the school out there in the middle of the track in red, and that's the first choice in lane four. First hand over made out now, first choice. And there goes Kashe Steven on the second leg for first choice. First choice. So we thought Kashe might have been on the anchor, but he hands over first with a good lead here now. They're up and running, first choice. First choice up and running. Giving chase on the outside is St. Mary's. Here comes Alpha now in position number three. Alpha is running back very strongly here now. Final hand over. There goes first choice. It's going to be a battle for second and third between Alpha and St. Mary's. But there goes first choice. First choice is going to win it. Here comes Grenada Junior Academy in second now. Junior Academy for second. But uh, first choice wins it now with a good and commanding lead. Grenada Junior Academy for second. St. Mary's for third. And it looks as though Westmoreland Junior for fourth. But a very, very impressive run by the quartet from the first choice primary school. And again, I did see the strategy in what they did here. Uh, we, see, we saw in the second leg, uh, Cache being able to pull out uh, and giving first choice that significant lead. And they did not lose it. So I always love that strategy where you put your fastest athlete to run the second leg. And most people think you should put your slowest athlete there. And the reason for that is that you can allow your fastest athlete to run 110 meters. He can take it deep within the zone and deliver it to the end of the zone. And so he is doing a lot more than the other athletes. And so he can really establish that. And that's exactly what Kashi did. I took did that battle and really put a commanding lead on the rest of the field. I did see, though, that there was a bit of struggle with that batter passing. There was a slowdown. Um, and that would have affected the time uh, a, a little bit. But nevertheless, they came out on top. And we can see from the live feed, the blue crowd in party mode as they are celebrating uh, their victories right here at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. I can tell you, the St. Mary's Junior School do have a very, very large fan base. So too is the Grenada Junior Academy. Both schools are in blue. And uh, they're right there on the finish line. You see the position that they have picked up here, right on the finish line to make sure that they get the best seats in the house. And they are close to the action indeed. And we can hear the drums playing, we can hear the horns blowing, rags waving. It's just a tremendous time here. If you're not here at the, Nash, uh, at the Karani James Athletic Stadium, I tell you, you're missing out today. It's good to see that although these two stop schools that we continue to mention, that's the Grenada Junior Academy and the St. Mary's Junior, they're not the always they're not the, the winners in, in the relays. So although they're dominating the games, other schools are still emerging as winners in the relays. We just saw here uh, first choice. And you junior see winning winning that relay. And that, that's what we're saying, Swit. Um, now there is there is the factor of having uh, a strong athlete that can dominate an event but something else comes into play when you have a team of athletes and so there's a great, uh, greater level of compensation uh, and that could propel uh, a team forward versus just having one athlete or one or two athletes that can you know really pull it off 
It's all about team effort here with the relays in particular. And of course, the Bartha exchange is a major factor that can influence um, the winners as well. A drop batter or a slow batter transition can affect the overall outcome of these events. The girls 4 by 100 meter relay on the 11 is the next event on the track. And we will see in lane one, Birian, sorry, Beacon, Beacon in lane one, Grace Lutheran in two, St. Mary's in three, Westmoreland Junior in four, First Choice in five, Grenada Junior Academy in six, Alpha in seven, and Gateway Christian in eight. So Westmoreland Junior, the favorite for this one, based on the seed, and uh, First Choice is also there in the mix. So too is St. Mary's and uh, Grenada Junior Academy. So again, Grenada Junior Academy and St. Mary's, not the fastest times, not the top seed, but they will be battling to ensure that they come ahead of each other in this, in this race as well. And they are just about ready to start. Event number 59, the girls, 4x100 meter relay under 11. They're on the starter's orders. The athlete in lane four is ahead of the white line, the starting line. She's been called back now, so the officials really on top of the game. Some jitter in there. That should have really been called back by the starting official. But nonetheless, they're up and running the 4 by 100 meters on the 11. Now we hear the second gun going off, is it? There seems to be some kind of mix-up here. Some of the athletes were going and they stopped. But uh, they've been called back here now. Obvious false start. We saw it from here as well. And we were wondering why the officials didn't call it back. Eventually, um, they were able to call it back. And we're going to have a rerun to the 4 by 100 meters but this is going on to the be 11 girls. Sorry, this is going to be a bit difficult though particularly because the girls would have run an entire leg already. That would mean they have to run it all over again. So what may happen is that they may get the boys to run now and then get the girls to come back and run after the boys. It's going to take some uh, logistical arrangements here to get them off the track. But I think the easier thing would be to maybe give them an extra two or three minutes to rest, relax, recompose and uh, restart the event rather than taking them off the track and having to use a lot more time. But we see, maybe that's what's gonna happen, exactly so, we see the next set of events, the next set of athletes are actually making their way onto the track. So we're gonna have a restart to the four by 100 meter relay on the 11. And so and we're going girls, we're gonna move into the boys now, and then I'm thinking that the officials would restart the girls following this event. And so we're going on to event number 60, the boys four by 100 meter relay under 11. And so we have in the lineup for that, uh, uh, once again, we had a false start. And so the officials and the starters have decided to let there be a switch between the girls division and the boys division. So the boys are going to be run off first, event number 60. And in the lineup we have uh, in lane one, Westmoreland Junior School, lane two, Beacon Junior School, Lane 3, First Choice. Lane 4, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane 5, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane 6, Alpha Junior School. Lane 7, Gateway Christian Academy. There you have it, the starting lineup for event number 60. The boys 4 by 100 meter relay on the 11. starting to get a little darker here at the stadium i'm assuming just now they will be putting on the lights but nevertheless that would not stop the action here today uh live action uh for the entire day thus far and it has been going very smoothly and we are looking forward to a prompt finish uh but not before we have loads and loads of action and excitement uh right here at the karate gym athletic stadium The boys seem to be pumped up and ready, baton in hand and uh, just agitating, ready to go, uh, can't stay still. 
but we have that yellow flag they're not ready yet at the other point so of course we'll have to wait a little while longer but I can imagine being a parent uh, of any one of these children uh, sitting in the audience at this time uh, what a proud moment that must be for the parents to see just to see their child on on, on that red carpet so to speak the red track uh, it's just a phenomenal thing well I don't think you can can get better than that for them at that age and in, in that in that particular school um, Gary Stevens is here with us and he's beaming with pride as I, I, I can just that. see that <laughs> his son Cassius Stevens has been doing extremely well for uh, first choice junior and we saw his, his school winning the relay moments ago but that is what these games do for these parents and I'm happy to see that they are out here in the numbers as well to support the kids now I understand that uh, we have a wide audience not just from Grenada but from the wide di diaspora including uh, some regions of the Eastern Caribbean so we welcome you our friends who are looking on the race is about to begin. We have a white flag. The boys are on their marks. Let's see what happens here now in the 4 by 100 meters relay for under 11 boys. Westmoreland, Beacon, First Choice, St. Mary's, Grenada Junior Academy, Alpha, Gateway, and uh, Star Academy. Well, they've been called up here by the starter. Seems to be some distractions down there as well. Seems to be an issue with the athlete out there in lane 7 from Gateway Christian. They've been called to the marks one more time. The under 11 boys. Seems to be another issue somewhere again. And we can see the frustration level building up on the athletes, the spectators. Seems as though it's an equipment malfunction here now. Again, we see an official chatting with the athlete out there in lane 7. They're going to have another crack at it. 4 by 100 meters on the 11. This is unbelievable now. It's another false start to that event. I'm not sure what the issue is, but for whatever reason, that race just can't seem to be going. We saw the girls moments ago, they had a false start. The boys are now on the track, and there have been a series of false starts. Not to show what the issue is. And you can hear by the reaction of the audience, they are a bit disappointed, well, mixed with ex ex excitement at the same time, uh, particularly because either they are at the edge of their seats or they're out their seats. They're at it again. Let's hope they can get it good now. The flag of the St. Mary's Junior waving in the foreground. This time it's a clean start. They're finally off. The 4 by 100 meter relay for under 11 boys. And looking good is St. Mary's Junior in lane 4. Make it up the stagger over Grenada Junior Academy in lane 5. St. Mary's Junior in the lead. First and over is St. Mary's Junior. Establishing a good lead over Alpha and Grenada Junior Academy. St. Mary's Junior looking good in the under 11 boys category. The second and over. They fumble with the batter. St. Mary's Junior dropped the batter, picks it up and continues to run. Alpha is in the lead. Grenada Junior Academy is giving good chase, but well, what a good recovery here by them. And on the inside, first choice. And Beacon in the red is also looking good. But it's first choice. Fumbles the batter. Ah, St. Mary's Junior recovers nicely again. Some poor batter passing here. But it's St. Mary's Junior. Grenada Junior Academy is there. Alpha is also there. But well, it's going to be an easy victory for St. Mary's Junior School. He wins it now. The battle is for second and third. A dip for the tape here by Grenada Junior Academy. It looks as though it's Alpha in third. But again, we saw two batter dropping here. One by St. Mary's on that second handover. And one by uh, Beacon Junior on, on the second handover as well. So two batter slippages here. But St. Mary's being able to recover and winning in the end. 
and it's so easy to drop that batter. I mean, when you think about the tension and the sweat and everything that comes with it, uh, it's easy to fumble sometimes. And of course, it could be very disappointing. But what was admirable is that they picked the batter up and they went on running. So the instructions was clear to them. If you drop the batter, make sure you pick it up. There we see that sea of blue. St. Mary's Junior Fan Club. They're here. And they're jumping, they're pumping because they know that victory means a lot for them in terms of retaining the championship and going for it in 2023. A sea of blue here, right on the finish line. St. Mary's Junior. Grenada Junior Academy under some pressure now. We wish we could have given you the point standing as it is now, but that is forthcoming. But I believe St. Mary's Junior is in the lead at the moment. We're going to see a rerun of the 4x100 meters on the 11 girls. Again, we have a nice picture shot here from inside the stadium, beaming out towards the cruise ship terminal. The flags, the feather banners of our title sponsors. Very prominent. Another view from our cameras. That's the GoPro shot. The spectacle of the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. March 24th, we're going to see the game. Grenada versus the USA right here. The national championships on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And so we invite you back for the live coverage. Those of you who can make it down to the national stadium. Here is where the Kyrifta team would be selected as well. It's a two-day national championship. And the lights are coming on as the sun begins to dip. And we have our girls all ready to run. And we're looking at the 4 by 100 meter relay under 11. Well, again, we give you the lane assignments. We have uh, Beacon in one, Grace Lutheran in two, St. Mary's Junior in three, Westmoreland Junior in four, First Choice in five, we need a Junior Academy in six, Alpha Junior in seven, and Gateway Christian in lane eight. private primary school games, an event sponsored by George F. Huggins. We'd also like to recognize some of the associate sponsors, such as Glen Egg Water. We also have We have Glenel Water, we have Na National Lotteries Authority, we have Flow, the Grenada Cooperative Bank, Digicel, and Republic Bank. These are our, our associate sponsors for this event, and of course our title sponsor is George of Huggins Grenada Limited. And there are also two partners, that's the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports and Culture, and the Grenada Athletic Association. Once again, event number 59, the girls 4 by 100 meter relay under 11. Just after that, we are going to be having only four more events according to our schedule. Uh, before we wrap up, we have the under 15s, 4 by 100 meter relays, girls and boys. And of course, we have the 800 uh, sprint medley, 2 by 1 by 1 by 4 open. So just to remind you of the lineup for this race, uh, the girls 4x100 meter relay under 11. Uh, lane 1, Berian, sorry, Beacon Junior School. Lane 2, Grace Lutheran. Lane 3, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane 4, Westmoreland Junior School. Lane 5, First Choice. Lane 6, Grenada Junior Academy. Lane 7, Alpha Junior School. And Lane 8, the Gateway Christian Academy. Not yet a white flag of course there is going to be a slight delay 
we have the yellow flag up once the white flag is up in all the areas then we will be ready to begin had a couple of records being broken today a couple of records being set and uh have not yet seen that in the relays though uh, hoping to see something of the sort uh in the not too distant future nevertheless we have four more events just after this one so anything can happen we have a white flag the whistle is blowing they are on their marks the start of the 4 by 100 meters on the 11 girls and they're up and running it seems as though it's a nice clean start here let's see who wants it more Westmoreland Jr is there but making up the stagger early seems to be Alpha Junior out there in lane seven. Alpha Junior indeed in lane seven out front. Handing over first now is a uh, first choice in lane five. Looking good is first choice out there in lane five. Out there in lane six is also Grenada Junior Academy. Grenada Junior Academy is there. First choice is there in the bright orange. Here comes St. Mary's now on the inside and Westmoreland secondary. But up front out there, it seems to be Grenada Junior Academy out there in lane 6. GJA in lane 6 and first choice out there in lane 5. The top two in this event. Then we have Westmoreland Junior in 4 and St. Mary's on the inside in 3. But out there in lane 6, it's Grenada Junior Academy. A run back here by Westmoreland Secondary. Westmoreland Junior, I beg your pardon. But it is Grenada Junior Academy for the victory. Westmoreland Jr. in second, and it seems as though it's St. Mary's Jr. in third. Again, a sort of an upset here. Alpha Jr. winning this one. Sorry, Grenada Jr. Academy winning this one over Westmoreland Jr., who were the favorites for, this, for the event. Of course, you get a lot of kind of tongue twisters in there, a lot of juniors and a lot of colors. So um, we really appreciate the <laughs> ability to be able to differentiate in short order and to self-correct. Right here in the Karani James Athletic Stadium, we are having a ball of a time, Huggins Private Primary School Games. Uh, you've just witnessed event number 59, the girls 4 by 100 meter relay under 11. Grenada Junior Academy takes it with 1 minute 5.19 seconds. Second position, Westmoreland Junior School, 1 minute 5.40 seconds. And in third position, First Choice Junior School, with a time of 1 minute 7.22 seconds. I don't think that they were able to cut that uh, record. The record is still um, standing uh, at 1 minute 3 point, sorry, 1 minute 3.19 seconds. The excitement continues. A victory there for Grenada Junior Academy means that they would close the gap that has been established by St. Mary's Junior for championship honors. St. Mary's picking up the third position in that last relay event. And already the next event is uh, about to be run. This is the event number 61, the girls 4x100 meter relay open. In the lineup we have in lane 2. Alpha Junior School, Lane 3, St. Mary's Junior School, Lane 4, Grenada Junior Academy, Lane 5, Gateway Christian Academy, Lane 6, the Beacon Junior School, Lane 7, First Choice, and Lane 8, Westmoreland Junior School. And we have the white flags ready and the whistle is being blown. They're on the starter's orders. Four by 100 meters on the 15 girls. There they are. Let's see who wants this one more. Grenada Junior Academy is a favorite in this one here. They're up and running on the 15 girls. 4 by 100 meters. Grenada Junior Academy making up the stagger nicely here. 
on the rest of the field. First hand over about to take place now. It is still Grenada Junior Academy in the lead. They lead over Gateway Christian and St. Mary's Junior. Alpha is making a good run for it in the white and green. Alpha stretching out the battle very early. Alpha hands over first actually. Oh, there goes Grenada Junior Academy. Fall, followed by Alpha, followed by St. Mary's on the inside. But Grenada Junior Academy up front here. St. Mary's making a run back for it. It's going to be a battle between Grenada Junior Academy and St. Mary's. Grenada Junior Academy, they're crossing lanes here like crazy, but it's Grenada Junior Academy. Alpha is making a run back here. Grenada Junior Academy, Alpha, then St. Mary's. Grenada Junior Academy wins this one comfortably now. Alpha in second, St. Mary's in third. And the last two events we see Grenada Junior Academy winning. St. Mary's coming third. So again, the gap here would be narrowed between St. Mary's Junior and Grenada Junior Academy. A wonderful team effort. And we await the official results from the officials. As we see again, the blue crew in celebratory mode, cel celebrate celebration mode, sorry, uh, just having a ball of a time right here, in this <laughs> right here in the stadium. And there we have it. The results are up. GJA first place with 1 minute 2.13 seconds. Alpha Junior School second, 1 minute 3.22 seconds. And in third, St. Mary's Junior School, 1 minute 4.95 seconds. But mind you, uh, once again, we want to remind you that the other positions also get points. So um, it's, of course, an advantage to come in the first three, but for the other positions, you do get points. And so the gap is not going to be too much of a significant gap that uh, uh, it would hamper certain teams from doing well. Well, the action continues here. We have three more relay events remaining. The 4x100 meters on the 15 boys. And then we have the two medley, the two sprint medley relays. The under 15 boys are under the status instructions. A little bit of tension between the fans of St. Mary's Junior and uh, Grenada Junior Academy. But the last two events, the last two relay events, Grenada Junior Academy would have won St. Mary's place in third. And that in itself would, you know, create those kind of moments, anxious moments, unless they keep in very close scores and tallies there. Uh, they, there's some uncertainty as to what the point standing is at the moment. I think it makes well for the suspension that is being built up as we get ready to announce the winners at the end of the sports meet. Sometimes. Three events remaining. The 4 by one under 15 boys about to be started. Ten competing schools in the Huggins Private Primary School Games 2023. And of course it was uh, from start to finish very smooth very exciting, uh, uh, very uh, eventful right here at the stadium. The relays always bring excitement to the games. We recall at several of our national games here, intercall games, several times at the final events, the relay events determine the overall winners. Um, in this case here, this year, the relay events are going to determine the overall winners. Grenada Junior Academy came in with a slight lead over St. Mary's. As we were entering into the relay, St. Mary's were ahead. And uh, I'm sure the relay events would determine the overall championship winners in 2023. So they seem to be ready now for the start of the 4x100 meters under 15 boys. One of the schools to look out for here is the Beacon Junior School. First choice is also one of the top contenders and of course Grenada Junior Academy. St. Mary's out there in lane 8 would have their work cut out for them. It's going to be a challenge for them running out of lane 8. 
And here again we see that uh, based on the lineup, the lane assignments, Grenada Junior Academy may very well end up ahead of St. Mary's in this race. We will try to get a point standing for you before the final two events. And maybe that would set the tone for those final two events. These two schools have been battling for several years. I recall under the coach, coaching of Coach Elcock, GJA dominated these games for several years. And then we saw the ascendancy of St. Mary's. For the last seven years, they've been champions. And in 2023, the battle is really on. GJA is trying to regain uh, that championship they had for several years and of course St. Mary is trying to defend uh, their championship title. And both schools have been long contenders uh, uh, when it comes to the top position for these games so it will be interesting to note who's going to take it away this round. Well Giovanni Green is going to be anchoring somewhere there for St. Mary's in this race. I'm not too sure how strong his team is because they're already in lane eight. But let's see what happens here. He was amongst the winners in the earlier events. There they go. Nice clean start. Four by 100 meters under 15 boys. And uh, it's difficult to see who is making a mistake here. He looks as though in uh, lane three, first choice in the orange. But they head out here now. On the second leg and up front there looks like the athlete from St. Mary's. St. Mary's running out of lane eight with a good lead here. Alpha is in second. The handover is made. St. Mary's is in the lead and extending the lead there. The rest of the field is outside of the shot. And St. Mary's has a commanding lead although they are there in lane eight. It's going to be a Herculean effort to catch up with St. Mary's out there in lane eight. The final handover is made. A fumble by St. Mary's. Here comes GJA now. GJA is fumbling as well. But St. Mary's has a good lead. Is he going to catch him? Is he going to run back? What a run here. But look at St. Mary's go. He would not be able to catch him. He definitely would not. St. Mary's out of the blues. Running out of lane 8. Wins it. He pumps his fist into the air. Triumphantly so too. Grenada Junior Academy would have to settle for second. And we wonder what has really happened here. Because St. Mary's Junior out there in lane 8. It tells you that they did not have a good time in the preliminaries and uh, Grenada Junior Academy had the second best time in the preliminaries but what a run here by St. Mary's Junior, Junior School and there we have the results St. Mary's Junior School 1 minute 33 seconds 1 minute point three three seconds uh, second position Grenada Junior Academy 1 minute 2.93 seconds and in third position Alpha Junior School 1 minute 3.96 seconds not very often you see a relay team running out of lane eight winning the relay unless maybe they dip for positions and the best team end up in, end, ends up in lane eight but what a good run here by st mary's because for the last two events before that one we know the junior academy were winning and there we see the jumping in the stands again of the st mary's uh, junior school we would love to see what is happening in the camp of the gja but we've just been told by our executive producer Based on the position of the GJA fans, it's absolutely difficult to capture them. Uh, it's unfortunate, but we'd have loved to see them as well. And the other schools as well, the Beacon, the Christian Academy, the First Choice, First Choice the Alpha, you know. We'd have loved to see the Grenada Junior Academy, the Grace Luther, and all of the, the, the spectators here. But definitely, there's a lot of action in the blue corner for St. Mary's Junior. No, it begs the question, wh uh, who are the students? <laughs> Seems like the parents are a bit even more excited than the students themselves, uh, which is extremely wonderful. And, of course, you said you've never seen something like that before in any of the sports beat. It's just so much energy, so much vibes right here at the National uh, Karen James Athletic Stadium today. Look at the crowd. Just look at them. <laughs> St. Mary's Jr., I think the they fans really pushing the athletes on. They're mm -hmm. right there on the finish line, so they're not missing anything. They're not missing a bit. 
They're actually doing their own photo finish as well. I think the team has a sense uh, that they have a possibility of coming out on top. Uh, but of course, we have not yet had the official results. It's coming just now. We'll give you an update in the not too distant future. Only two more events for this evening. And so we're looking forward to that. We go over to the stadium microphone. The match pass results are about to be announced. About to be announced. 43.98 points for our match pass competition. St. Mary's Junior School. And ladies and gentlemen, winning the 2023 Huggins Private School Championship March Pass Competition, 45.3 points, Westmoreland Junior School! So there you heard it, the winners of the March Pass competition were small and junior. And I looked at them during the March Pass, they were impressive as well. There were a few schools that were more impressive than others, but they were definitely in the top three in my own uh, judging of the March Pass. And congratulations to Westmoreland Junior School for winning the March Pass competition. The March Pass was judged by members of the Royal Grenada Police Force, they were here and uh, they thought that in their own judgment were small and sick were small and junior the overall winners of the match pass competition and the action will return on the track momentarily with the medley sprint relays it's going to be a two by one by one by four so 200 meters on the first leg followed by 100 meters then another 100 meters and the final leg would be a 400 meter sprint to the finish line Excitement building up here to a uh, high point in the Georgia Foggins Private Primary School Track and Field Championships 2023. Would St. Mary's Junior hold on to the reign? Would Grenada Junior Academy retain the championship that they held for several years or regain the championship that they held for several years? It's a terrific competition between these two schools. I remind you that at the start of competition today, only half a point separated those two schools. And we've seen some exchanges in the lead throughout the day. But at the moment, I believe St. Mary's Junior may just have the edge over Grenada Junior Academy. But what a battle it is between those two schools. Uh, Grenada Junior Academy did put up a good fight, I must say. And... Um they showed themselves to be formidable foes to the St. Mary's Junior School and to the other schools as well. Uh, well, we do have the point standing now after event number 62. That's just before the... That's, that's actually up to date. And we'll give you that quickly before we go into the next event. In 10th position with one point is the A-plus Institute Junior Academy. In 9th position is the Gateway Christian Academy on 71 points in eighth position is star academy on 102 points in seventh position is grace lutheran school on 126 points in sixth position is the beacon junior school on 132 and a half points in fifth position is westmoreland junior school on 338 and a half points in fourth position is alpha junior school on 390 and a half points. In third position is First Choice Junior School on 426 points. And I can tell you the difference between the school that is up front and the school that is in second position. The school up front has 541 and a half points and the school in second position has 487 points. A commanding lead indeed. The school up front with 541 and a half points is St. Mary's Junior School and in second position 
is Grenada Junior Academy. So St. Mary's 541 and a half, Grenada Junior Academy 487 points. So from the looks of it, Charles, it doesn't seem as though mathematically Grenada Junior Academy would be able to beat the St. Mary's Junior School based on the points difference. I make it some 54 and a half points difference. And even if they win the last two relays and St. Mary's drops the batter or is disqualified, disqualified, they would not be able to catch them. So congratulations in advance to St. Mary's Junior School for retaining the championship for maybe uh, next year, not maybe next year, for the eighth consecutive year. And the Grenada Junior Academy will have another opportunity as well as the other eight schools in 2024 to see if they can really dethrone the St. Mary's Junior School. I don't think a kingdom lasts forever. So eventually something is going to happen there. It's going to be a paradigm shift. As we indicated before, the GJA used to be the dominating factor. And now we have St. Mary's Junior School on top. And who knows, um, seen very good contentions coming from uh, First Choice Junior School. Uh, good performances from Alpha as well. And, and Westmoreland, of course, and all the other schools. So um, we're going to see a holistic development of our youths. Uh, as they vie for that uh, top position. What I would have loved, what I would have loved to see, though, Charles, is that maybe a closer point standing with these final two events, so that we still would have been uncertain as to who the overall champion school would be, to create that additional excitement and fervor with the fans who are here and those who are viewing online. Right. But we've just um, stole the joy and really bust the bubble, so to speak, <laughs> of the fans who are out there by, by releasing the scores. Or we can safely say St. Mary's Junior has retained the title of the Huggins Private Private School Games 2023. Another medal presentation is taking place at this time, so of course we switch to the field audio. Uh, we'll be right back. In second position, a time of 1 minute 12.12 seconds. Alpha Junior School and winning this event in a time of 1 minute 11.82 seconds Westmoreland Junior School Event number 56, the boys four by 100 meter relay under nine division. In third position, in a time of one minute, 10.10 seconds, first choice junior school. In second position, a time of one minute, 7.59 seconds, St. Mary's junior school. And winning this event in a time of one minute, 6.41 seconds, Grenada Junior Academy. Event number 57, the girls four by 100 meter relay, under 13 division. In third position in a time of one minute, St. Mary's Junior School. In second position, in a time of 59.39 seconds, Grenada Junior Academy. And winning this event, in a time of 58.68 seconds, Alpha Junior School. Event number 58, the boys, four by 100 meter relay, under 13 division. In third position, in a time of 59.89 seconds, St. Mary's Junior School. In second position, in a time of 58.85 seconds, Alpha Junior School. And winning this event 
in a time of 55.61 seconds. First choice, Junior School. Event number 59, the girls four by 100 meter relay on the 11 division. In third position, a time of one minute, 7.22 seconds. First choice, junior school. In second position, a time of one minute, 5.4 seconds, Westmoreland Junior School. And winning this event in a time of one minute, 5.19 seconds, Grenada Junior Academy. We say a thank you to Mr. Sheldon Alexander for assisting us with these medals and congratulations to all of our athletes. So we head back to the announcer's booth for our final two events of the evening. Our relay medleys. Thank you very much to the medal presentation party. Congratulations to all of the medalists. So viewers, we welcome you back to the live track and field action here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium is the Georgia Huggins Private Primary Schools Track and Field Championships 2023. And before the start of the final two events, we can give you the top three schools. St. Mary's Junior up front on 541 and a half points, Grenada Junior Academy on 487, and the first choice junior on 426. The penultimate relay is the girls' 800 meters sprint medley. It's a two by one by one by four, and it's an open category event. And then following that, we'll have the boys doing the same sprint medley event so the athletes are taking up their positions on the track the first leg is going to be 200 meters then there are going to be 200 meter legs in between and the final leg is going to be 400 meters So as the curtain comes down on the 2023 edition of the private primary school games, we look forward to seeing the day when the inclusion of these uh, uh, schools into the national, prim into the national primary school games. And that is the clarion call that we're hearing from uh, the organizers of the private primary school. And I'm sure the likes of George Apogee uh, Cherubin and others who have been clamoring for that over the years would want to see that come to fruition sometime in the near, near future. We'd also like to say a special thank you to Georgia Foggins and all of the other associate sponsors, such as Glenegg Spring Water, Flo, the National Lottery Authority, the Grenada Cooperative Bank, Digicel, and Republic Bank Grenada Limited. We'd also like to say a special thank you to the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports, and Culture, and of course, the Grenada Athletic Association.
Uh, the Grenada Private Primary Schools Association expresses heartfelt gratitude to all those who contributed in one way or the other to make the sports the success that it has been. The tremendous atmosphere, the preparation of the athletes, the preparation of the facilities, the track officials, and all those who have contributed in some form of fashion. Of course, TNR Communication, always here to bring it to you live, best quality audio. And they're going to be also bringing Intercall Games live. It's a pay-per-view event. And so uh, you can stay tuned for information as to how you can purchase the viewing rights for the Intercall Games, especially those of you in the diaspora who would love to view Intercall Games 2023. TNR Communication is going to bring it to you. They're going to be also bringing the national champs on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So those of you who are interested in seeing Intercall Games, you can log on to tizik.com. That's T-I-Z-I-Q. That's where you can purchase... The live stream for Intercall Games 2023. TIZIQ.com. So we're still waiting to start for the penultimate event. That's the medley event, the sprint, the sprint medley for the females. It's an open event, two by one by one by four. Today we saw some really, really outstanding performances from many of the athletes in the private primary schools. We're going to give you a sort of a capsule account of what these athletes would have accomplished uh, today. Uh, prior to today, they had the track, the, sorry, the field events and uh, a number of outstanding performances in the field events as well. But we're going to focus heavily on the track events that we saw today in these games. So we don't know what is the hold up on the track, but it seems as though they're ready now and momentarily we will see the start of the four of the two by one by one by four medley relay for the girls. Giles, you're back with us. Um, your thoughts and impressions of what you've seen today? We we'll take that momentarily as we go down track side for the medley event for the girls. Two by one by one by four. And they're up and running. Alpha, Beacon, Grace Lutheran, Grenada Junior Academy, St. Mary's Junior, First Choice, Gateway, and Westmoreland Secondary. 200 meters on the first leg. And it looks as though it's First Choice out there, making up the stagger nicely. St. Mary's seems to be in second position. And then we have Alpha making a run on the inside. 200 meters on the first leg. Let's see who hands over first. First and over, an athlete goes down, and that looks as though it's Grenada Junior Academy. She picks up the batter, but she'll have her work cut out for her now. As we look towards the front of the pack, we see Alpha. We also see Beacon there. First and over is Alpha. But there is also St. Mary's Junior. Grenada Junior Academy is still there, and on the outside in lane 8, it looks as though it's... Uh, Westmoreland Junior on the outside. The final and over is a 400 meter leg. They're going to scratch towards the inside lane. It's Beacon in the lead, followed by Westmoreland. And then it looks as though it's St. Mary's Junior. And then uh, we also see Grace Lutheran there in the fourth position. But Alpha in the lead, followed by Westmoreland Junior. Westmoreland Junior mo now moves into the lead. Over 200 meters to go is the final leg of the medley event, two by one by one by four. Can Westmoreland Junior hold on to that lead that they have of 10 meters or so? With 200 meters to go, it is still Westmoreland Junior. 
Where's Smolan Jr.? Is Alpha going to make a fight back for it? Where is Grenada Jr. Academy? Where is St. Mary's? But where Smolan is looking strong with 100 meters to go. We now see Grenada Jr. Academy coming into the picture. But where Smolan Jr. is looking good. She's going to put all her effort into this one. Alpha is tying up a little bit here. 50 meters lead here it seems. Westmoreland Jr. is going to win this one, the penultimate event, the last one for the females. She wins it now, a good run indeed on the last leg, getting the batter in second position and bringing it home first. Alpha in second. It looks as though it's Grenada Jr. Academy here in third. St. Mary's is going to pick up the fourth and a beacon in fifth. But Charles, a very good run by Westmoreland Jr. on the last leg. She got the batter in second position with maybe a 10 minute uh, head start on her. And she was able to run back well, caught up with the athlete, maintain good form, good composure, extended the lead and winning comfortably in the end. And again, uh, it goes to show the level of training and, and, and development that is taking place with the athletes generally. This was event number 63, the girls 800 meters print medley, two by one by one by four, open. Uh, we await the official times uh, and of course the positions uh, it's been just keen competition you were asking earlier uh, okay there we have it in first position Westmoreland Junior School with a time of 2 minutes 11.53 seconds in second position we have Alpha Junior School 2 minutes 18.41 seconds and in third position taking up the third Waiting on the scoreboard. I'm not too sure if they're ready yet. Um, but of course, uh, the competition has been a very keen one today. Uh, throughout the games, we've seen it from start to finish. And of course, uh, there was a glimmer of hope in the eyes of uh, Grenada Junior Academy uh, uh, in the early rounds. And of course, uh, the tables turned later on and the gap just seemed to be widening and widening. And of course, we have St. Mary's Junior School leading out front at this time. Well, Grenada Junior Academy came in with a very slender lead of half a point. They were able to extend that lead to some point and maintain it for most of the day. But towards the end of the day, it was St. Mary's Junior, the defending champions, who put together a strong team and strong performances. And... Uh, have won the championships with at least two events remaining. St. Mary's Junior already declared the winners. I'm but glad you, sorry, I'm, I'm glad you pointed out though that the, there were events before the sports meet that led up to this, which included uh, field events. And so we see from the point standing, the strength of the different schools in relation to the field events as well, um, as they were significant in uh, contributing to where the, the, the schools are right now. Absolutely. And for those of you who are interested in the pay-per-view stream from TNR Communications, there's also a season pass that you can purchase because the games will be over three days. And so you can purchase the season pass at concessionary rates or you can purchase individual days, if you like, for viewing Intercall Games 2023. We are about to witness event number 64, the final event of the day, the 800 meter sprint, sprint medley, two by one by one by four. That's a 200 meter followed by a 100 meter and another 100 meter, and then a 400 meter um, to pull it up to the finish. In the lineup we have in lane one, Alpha Junior School, lane two, Gateway Christian Academy, Lane 3, Westmoreland Junior School. Lane 4, St. Mary's Junior School. Lane 5, First Choice. Lane 6, Grenada Junior. Lane 7, Grace Lutheran. And Lane 8, Beacon. Well, there they go, the start of the final event, the medley event. It's a 2 by one by one by 4 Looking good already is the athlete there from the first choice. So too is St. Mary's. St. 
St. Mary's make it up the stagger nicely here on this 200 meter leg. The final hand, the final event, the first hand over. There goes first choice in the red. We have not yet seen the big man himself, but there goes first choice. First choice with a good lead here over the rest of the field. First choice hands over first. St. Mary's in second. First choice, they still have the final leg, which is a 400 meter leg. First choice, followed by St. Mary's, then there's Alpha, then there's Grenada Junior Academy. First choice pumping hard and making that final and over. There goes Keshuk Stevens. As we see St. Mary's Junior go past him here. But we let we have to see what would happen. The race is not for the fastest, but for who could endure to the end. It's a 400 meter event. Is he going to take the bait and go after him? Or is he going to keep with his race plan? This is going to be an exciting one. It's a race of strategy here. A quick runoff here by St. Mary's. Let's see what Stevens have in the tank. There he goes. He changes gear now with 200 meters to go. Does he have more left in the tank? St. Mary's Jr. is tiring up here now with 100 meters to go. He looks over his left shoulder. But Stevens is also tired. Stevens winning the one and 200 meters before. There's nothing more left in the tank here. Maybe let his St. Mary's teammate or, or compatriot go too far ahead of him. St. Mary's brings home the glory winning this race and winning the championship for eight consecutive years. First choice in second with Stevens. But he's clipped on the tip here by Alpha Jr. What a race it is. Stevens obviously tired from his exploits in the 100 meters and the 200 meters. But a fitted end to this event for St. Mary's Jr. Winning the final event and winning the championship here. Alpha picking up the bronze medal in this event. First choice in third as they laid all on the track here. Giving off the last ounce of energy. A fitting end and a fitting finale to this, the 2023 Georgia F. Huggins Private Primary School Sports. And of course, we would love to thank our sponsor, our title sponsor for this event, George F. Huggins, for continuing to support uh, for over uh, 10 years. I think it was about 15 years, 15 years, at least 15 years, 15 years of support to these games. And we want to really recognize uh, the company and we want to thank the CEO and her team for um, being the title sponsors and being cont contributing towards this wonderful event. And of course, we recognize our associate sponsors, Glenelg, National Lotteries Authority, Flo, Grenada Cooperative Bank, Digicel, Republic Bank. And of course, the, our partners, the Ministry of Youth Sports and uh, Education. Right, Ministry of Education, Youth Sports and Culture, and of course, the Grenada Athletic Os Athletics Association. Well, the crowd is going crazy right now, Smith. As I anticipate, uh, celebration has already kicked in. Uh, I think the different teams, the different schools are celebrating, you know, in, victories in itself uh, in, because it's not just about coming first. Uh, it's not just coming in the first three, but it's about showing up and showing what you have, showing forth. And we see, we've seen here today significant displays of valor, of tenacity, and the list goes on as uh, we witness in all the performances today. Different students, different uh, schools uh, just doing what they have to do. And the energy continues with the celebration of the audience. Of course, we have the blue crew. Uh, uh, camera seems to be fixed on them. Uh, of course, they are celebrating what they believe would be uh, victory for them as they have been dominating uh, in front uh, that's the St. Mary's Junior School uh, unofficially we could definitely say that uh, St. Mary's Junior School would have copped the title this year but we wait of course until the judges uh, and the officials declare it uh, through giving the uh, point standing uh, uh, as of the as of the end of uh, today's events. Well, we extend congratulations to St. Mary's Junior School. 
but uh, a team is as strong as its weakest link and so we want to recognize the contributions of all of the athletes competing today. Um, there are some athletes that obviously stood out above the rest and so we would like to maybe recognize some of these athletes in the various categories and schools that did outstanding to bring championship glories and outstanding performances to their respective schools. So we recognize in the under seven girls category Janelle Radix of Grace Lutheran. She um, was first in the 40 meters, I think it was, for the under seven girls. Um, Kalik Nimrod from the Beacon Junior, he was also impressive in that category. Um, Jazia Johnson from Alpha in the under nine category, in the girls category, she was brilliant as well. Um, so too was Jehu Roberts from Grenada Junior Academy. Although not placing first in the 100 meters, he came back to win, I think, not the 100, but the 80 meters, he came back to win the 150 meters and anchored his team to victory in the relay event. Um, Connor Mary Monroe, what can we say about her? She was brilliant. She was outstanding from St. Mary's Junior. And we must also recognize uh, Dominic Joseph, who placed second behind her in all of the events from the West Poland Junior School. Jonathan Labari from St. Mary's, he dominated the under 11 boys category. And uh, so too was Kea Swan from Grenada Junior Academy in the under 13 girls category. Kashe Steven, very impressive indeed, setting a new record in the 100 meters, I think it was, from the first choice junior school. We see him tiring up towards the end and not being able to anchor his team to victory in the final relay. But he was outstanding in the under 13 boys category. And in the under 15 boy, uh, girls category, Ronisha Lawrence was the outstanding athlete there from the Grenada Junior Academy. And of course, Giovanni Green from St. Mary's Junior Academy, the outstanding male athlete in the under 15 category. So these, in my estimation, uh, Charles, were some of the more outstanding athletes today on the track. And they really contributed immensely to the positioning of their various schools at the end of the game. So again, the battle was really between, when it started at the beginning of the day, it was between three schools, Grenada Junior Academy, St. Mary's Junior and First Choice Junior. But as the day progressed, we noticed some different things were happening, right? So the, the two schools, Grenada Junior Academy and St. Mary's Junior, really pulled themselves away from First Choice Junior right. very, very quickly. And then the gap remained very close. Grenada Junior Academy coming in with a half point lead, maintained it. At one point, it was two and a half points. Another point, it went a little further than that. And then, towards the late afternoon, that's where St. Mary's Junior really started accelerating, narrowing the gap, and went past uh, Grenada Junior Academy up to the point of the break. When it came down to the final relays, Grenada, sorry, St. Mary's Junior School was ahead. And they maintained that momentum and lead towards the end, establishing a further lead on the Grenada Junior Academy. And by the time we got to the final two relays, it was already Curtin's call. Another victory for St. Mary's Junior, making it eight in a row in 2023. An impressive result over the years. Very impressive indeed. And of course, uh, in a short while, we will be witnessing the final medal, pre medal presentation for the day and award ceremony where you will see the top performance uh, also being awarded uh, trophies, medals, etc. for the uh, wonderful work that they've done here today. I want to make the point too that the Presentation Brothers College, PBC, seems to be a direct beneficiary for most of the athletes coming out of the private primary school games. For the boys, yeah. In, <laughs> in, in the boys' area, especially from St. Mary's and maybe from Grenada Junior Academy and, and others. And we see that manifesting itself last year and and this year as well with some of the athletes that are dominating for pbc coming from the private primary schools and that, that strengthens the point that we were making earlier on even when we had the ceo from georgia Foggins here that these athletes must really be given the equal opportunity as the others from the public private schools at the national level and even at the regional level and so we look forward to the day again of, on, on this very contentious issue as to the inclusion of the private primary schools into the mix of the national primary school games. The argument from the Grenada Union of Teachers is that these schools are not affiliates to the Grenada Union of Teachers and therefore they do not qualify to participate in activities undertaken by the Grenada Union of Teachers. 
But I think two things can be happen. The, either the schools become affiliate or we look at the bigger picture and invite these private primary schools as a combined team to take up that extra lane that is available at the National Primary School Games. So it's a conversation that has started many years ago. It's a conversation that is contentious. I remember one year, the private primary schools actually came to participate and they were removed from the track because there were some protests happening in certain quarters from the, the, the teachers of the public schools. Right. And, 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 and that, that's the extent to which this has, has gone so far. But I think um, the sins of the, the, the parents and the teachers should not be really passed on to the <laughs> students and they're really being deprived of that opportunity because of that administrative issue, if I may call it that, that is happening between the union and the teachers that are quote unquote not unionized so, uh, or part of their union. I think uh, uh, if we're going to approach it in that light, there's going to have to be so, a paradigm shift uh, possibly uh, rebranding or doing over or birthing something new to include uh, all in, in, in that bracket. So unlike Intercall that is organized by the Principals Association of Secondary Schools, the National Prime, well I call it national in quotation, but the, the, that National Primary School Games is organized by the Grenada Union of Teachers. So it's not done by the principals of the primary schools or by the ministry. And that's, the, that's, the, that's the, the argument that they're bringing forward. It's their game, so it's only their affiliates are allowed to participate in their games. So we have to find a resolution to that because I think these athletes from the private primary schools should be able to compete amongst their peers in the other schools. What we're going to do, we're going to go down to the track for the medal presentation and we're going to return with the final closing remarks from us here in the commentary position. And winning this event... In a time of 2 minutes, 11.53 seconds, Westmoreland Junior School. These are your medalists for event number 63. The girls 800 sprint medley, 2 by 1 by 1 by 4. Next event. Event number 64, the boys 800 sprint medley. In third position, in a time of 2 minutes, 7.81 seconds, first choice junior school. In second position, 2 minutes, 7.07 .07 seconds, Alpha junior school. And winning this event in a time of two minutes flat, St. Mary's Junior School. So we say a special thank you to Mr. Kester Elcock, our meet coordinator for today. And congratulations to all of our athletes. We ask all athletes, all members of St. St. Mary's, please clear the field. Please clear the field. And we'll now award our divisional champions. And to assist us with these awards, please welcome Miss Hannah Forsythe. The HR manager at George F. Huggins. Let's put our hands together for Miss Forsythe. So we'll now award our divisional champions. Waiting, 
So you've heard the various divisions throughout the course of today. We have the under seven division, male and female. We have the under nine division, male and female. Under 11, under 13, and the under 15 division as well. So we'll be awarding the best performing athlete in each of these divisions. individual under seven champion amassing a total of 20 points we have a tie in this division jewel radix of grace lutheran school and madison thomas of grenada junior academy So that's your under seven female division. Jewel Radix of Grace Lutheran School, amassing a total of 20 points. And she's tied with Madison Thomas of Grenada Junior Academy, who also amassed a total of 20 points in her division. Under seven male division. We also have a tie in this division. From the Beacon Junior School, Kalik Nimrod. He amassed a total of 20 points. And from the Grenada Junior Academy, Kazane Rouse. He also amassed a total of 20 points. Your under seven male champion. Kazane Rouse, Grenada Junior Academy, tied with Kalik Nimrod of the Beacon Junior School. Under nine division. Your under nine female champion from First Choice Junior School, Taija Hamilton, amassing a total of 34 points. Put our hands together for Taisha Hamilton of First Choice Junior School. We move to the under nine division. Your male champion amassing a total of 44 points. From Grenada Junior Academy, Jehu Roberts. Jehu Roberts of Grenada Junior Academy, your under nine male champion. Next division on the 11 division. We have clear cut champions in these divisions as well. So on the 11 female champion, amassing a total of 48 points from the Westmoreland Junior School, Dominique Joseph. Female individual champion on the 11 division, Dominique Joseph of the Westmoreland Junior School. Dominique amassing a total of 48 points over the days of competition. On the 11 division, male champion, 
amassing a total of 36 points from the St. Mary's Junior School, Jonathan Labari. We move to the under 13 female division, amassing a total of 38 points from Alpha Junior School, Leah Campbell. Your under 13 female champion, Leah Campbell of Alpha Junior School. Under 13 male division, amassing a total of 44 points from First Choice Junior School, Cache Stephen. We move to the under 15 female division, amassing a total of 44 points from Grenada Junior Academy, Ronisha Lawrence. Under 15 male division, amassing a total of 60 points from St. Mary's Junior School, Giovanni Green. Special thank you to Miss Hannah Forsythe, the HR manager at Huggins Division, for assisting us with these championships. And now we have two special awards the Dr. Sean Lambert 100 Meter Champion Award. These awards will be given by Mr. Kester Elcock, our meet coordinator for the day. We welcome you back, viewers, to the live commentary at the George F. Huggins Private Primary Schools Track and Field 2023 as we witness the final presentations for the individual champions. And of course, the champion school will also be pre presented with their trophy. The match was winners also, as we see a presentation being made now to uh, Mr. Elcock, who is one of the main organizers of the event. As a matter of fact, he will be making the presentation, that's Mr. Elcock. But we just want to recap some of the major performances, of, as you've heard just moments ago, the individual champions that were called here. And I still have with me Alistair Charles, who has been assisting with the commentary. And Alistair, overall, your impressions of the games today? Very well organized, um, timely, and um, the performance were of a considerable standard. And I really appreciate uh, the efforts that have been go um, that the organizers took to make this a reality here today. 
We see now on the winner's roster, Kashi Stevens. He would have been awarded maybe the most outstanding athlete of the games, the Victor Lodurum. And he was brilliant in the 100, 200 and 400 meters, actually establishing a new record in one of these events as well. Um, I thought the games were very competitive. Um, there was no one school dominating totally on the track. Um, the schools that emerged as the overall winners, they, they did not win all of the events. They were second, third, sometimes fourth, didn't even medal in some of the events, which was okay. good. We saw some of the lesser known schools, the, the um, Grace Lutheran and others, um, gaining podium positions, which is also very good. And then I think maybe the most impressive part for a lot of people were the spectators in the stands. Oh, yeah. The level of support that they provided for these athletes. Um, these track moms and track dads, I think, was tremendous. We've also um, heard from the CEO of George F. Huggins and their 15 years of support and the pledge of their continued support for these games, which is tremendous. It's not always um, possible to attract and to maintain sponsorship and cooperate contributions for, for events. That's right. But George F. Huggins sees the value in these particular games and have pledged their support to continue um, supporting it at the same time. And we realize the value further when we look at the history of the athletes um, after the fact. Uh, because most of these athletes, of course, go on to secondary schools. Some of them are public secondary schools. Uh, and they go on to perform in Intercall and uh, national champs uh, and even in the Curfter Games. So we're going to come back with the closing uh, uh, wrapping comments. We're going to go back down to trackside for the remainder of the presentations. And now your overall champions across all divisions, your Victrix Ladora, amassing a total of 52 points from the Grenada Junior Academy, Ronisha Lawrence. Now your overall male champion, the Victor Lodurum, amassing a total of 78 points from St. Mary's Junior School, Giovanni Green. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment that we have been waiting for. Your final point standing and our top three teams at the end of today's games. In third position, 440 points, first choice junior school. And now, ladies and gentlemen, second position scored 503 points. First position scored 531.5 points. At the end of today's championships, in second position, 503 points, Grenada Junior Academy.
And ladies and gentlemen, our final award, your 2023 Huggins Private Primary School Champions, 531 points, championship number eight, St. Mary's Junior School. <laughs> Combination specialist St. Mary's Junior School, eight in a row. It seemed unlikely at some point during the day today, but they hung on. They fought until the end. They brought it over all the way to the finish line. Congratulations, eight in a row. St. Mary's Junior School. As we see the closing scenes here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, the victory lap and victory celebrations by the athletes, students, supporters of the St. Mary's Junior School, making it eight in a row in 2023. What an outstanding performance, Charles, of St. Mary's Junior School. They came in trailing by half a point and winning by 33 points, I think it is. St. Mary's Junior, the champions in 2023. Impressive performance by St. Mary's and of course their contender, the Gren uh, Grenada Junior Academy, uh, of gave them a wonderful run for their money, I should say. Indeed it was. Just to recap some of the outstanding athletes, we missed the under seven girls, but I can tell you in the under seven boys, it was Kalik Nimrod from the Beacon Junior School. The under nine girls, it was TJ Hamilton from Alpha. And uh, in the boys, uh, Jehu Roberts of the Green Junior Academy. In the under 11 category, Dominic Joseph from the West Moreland Junior School. She was the uh, individual champion in that category. And Jonathan Labari from St. Mary's Junior was the overall boys champion in the under 11 category. In the under 13 category, it was actually Leah Campbell from Alpha and uh, Kashi Stephen from First Choice, respectively girls and boys and then in the under 15 category Ronisha Lawrence of the Grenada Junior Academy and Giovanni Green from St. Mary's Junior were the divisional champions the victor and Victrix Lodurum the Victrix Lodurum also coming from Grenada Junior Academy in the likes of Ronisha Lawrence and the Victor Lodurum that's the most outstanding male athlete Giovanni Green also of St. Mary's Junior School so there we have it the final point standing, uh, St. Mary's Junior winning on 531.5 points and Grenada Junior Academy giving, giving them a run for the money this year in 2023, finishing on 503 points. So, um, some final comments from you, Charles, as we're about to put a wrap on the Georgia Foggins 2023 private primary school games. Well, I must say that I believe that the future for Grenada with relation to sports is very, very, very bright. We had significant performances here today. Uh, we saw wonderful talent. Uh, some of uh, the athletes are well-rounded, uh, both performing well in the field events as well as on the track. And so I see that in the future, we're going to have some good performances, uh, probably going national, um, international with some of them one day. Well, that's the voice of Alistair Charles making his debut on television commentary. And doing a good job of this as well. Thank you. And so on behalf of the entire production team, I would like to single out our camera crew. That's Colin Dragon, Reggie Joseph, Gary Steven. We have Nazim Benjamin, who was responsible for the live streaming. And of course, our executive producer and technical director today, Richie Olivier. That's the TNR communications team that brought this coverage to you live. We ask you to log on and to sign up on tizik.com for the live streaming of intercall games on the weekend we're also going to have the national champions championship stream live as well in which the national team for the character games will be selected and so there's a lot of track and field action coming up um later on this month the national prim primary school games are also going to be streamed live by tnr communication and then we have football action tomorrow up at four not been brought by tnr communication but the Grenada national team plays against the La, La Hoketa Rangers from Trinidad and Tobago. 
on Friday and on Sunday. So on behalf of the entire crew, I'm Leslie Smith on behalf of Alistair Charles and the entire team saying so long. See you again next year when we bring to you more live action of the National Private Primary School Games sponsored by Georgia Foggins. Until then, we say goodbye from the Kiriani James Athletic Stadium.